Hi everyone, this is Debbie Moynihan from White Wizard Games and I have Chris Swan with me. Hi everyone. The wrong way. <laughs> with me as well. We're super excited. Today we are going to be doing two things. We're going to give an intro to Tabletopia and we will also be showing you how to play Hero Realms. And if anyone watching is interested in jumping in and playing a game, we had some last minute cancellations from our the people that were supposed to be playing. Otherwise, Chris and I get to play, which, you know, is okay with us. But if anyone wants to play, just comment and chat and we can get you the information to join in. And it's browser based. You don't need to load any software or anything. Hi, Michael. Thanks for joining. So a couple things. I'm going to share my screen here. And um, so we can just take a look at just the Tabletopia homepage. So a couple things that I like about Tabletopia because um, you might wonder, why do we put Hero Realms on Tabletopia? Uh, many of our players know that we are working on a Hero Realms app, but, you know, with, with COVID and everything, we wanted to give people options to play our games with their friends now, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, and Tabletopia, you know, has a lot of really nice benefits. One thing that I really like about Tabletopia is it is browser-based, so you don't need to install any software. Um compared to Tabletop Simulator, which we talked about earlier this week, which Kapow and Source are available there. With Tabletop Simulator, you need to have Steam, you need to go to multiple places and you know get the, the workshop for Steam. There's a multi-step process to play a game on Tabletop Simulator. And as I also mentioned, I actually went out and got a new computer because to run Tabletop Simulator, it does require a lot of resources. The way that Tabletopia is architected, it does not, it, the way that it was created, it doesn't require as many resources. So, you know, you could play on a late, lighter weight laptop, um, but you can basically play on anything with a browser, which I like, and it doesn't take too long to load. So the other thing that a lot of people like about Tabletopia, you know, because we are gamers and we like to save our money to buy board games, is that it is free. Um, there's a lot of games on here that are free. So some of the other options like Tabletop Simulator is $20 on Steam to get started. Um, so both if you want to play a game, there's a lot of games on here that you can play solo or that you can invite a friend to. Um, and those are all, many of them are free, but also if you invite a friend. So if you're playing something on Tabletop Simulator and you're like, hey, Joe, or hey, Mary, you know, you want to come and play? You know, then they need tabletop simulator. So they need, so it's a, it's a big barrier. Like I know a lot of my friends just can't go and just spend $20 on whatever they want. So um, so it is nice on Tabletopia that you can create a room, invite your friends to play a game and it's totally free and they just have to jump on a browser. And so if you're watching again and you want to play, we yeah, are, let us know. we're taking players. So just mention in the chat, if you're interested in playing, we'll get you the information. Otherwise, when we get to the demo part, Chris and I are going to play. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't totally don't mind that. So um, just on the homepage itself, and I'm going to look a little bit to my left here because I'm looking at my big monitor as I show you around this page. Um, a couple things. So here on the homepage, there's always like something highlighted here. So this hideous abominations, I think is on Kickstarter right now and it's highlighted. Here the next row shows now playing. This shows you the rooms that I have open. So if you've started some rooms, you can keep them going and leave and come back with your friends to the same rooms and you'll have them open here in this middle area, which is kind of nice. So, you know, I was checking out some games. I, I like Quacks. Quacks is on Tabletopia, so I checked that out. Um, so I could click on these and it'll go to the rooms that I created. I also was checking out like Core Quest, which is on Kickstarter. It's actually becoming pretty popular now when a game is on Kickstarter for there to be a table, either a Tabletopia or a Tabletop Simulator implementation. And also more and more publishers and indie designers are using it for play testing. So um, that's another thing that like I do like about Tabletopia is, you know, as a publisher, you know, we can put stuff up, we can put stuff on here that isn't available to everyone. And, you know, we have a relationship with Tabletopia, so that's great. So sometimes we have things in the work, it's not available to the public. So the campaign, which we demoed last night, the Hero Realms campaign is not available to the public. We may make it available to the public, but right now we're testing it out and trying it out ourselves and occasionally streaming it, for example. And then, you know, down here at the bottom, there's news. These are new games like Game of Trains, which Actually, I have this game and I've never played it, so maybe I will play it on Tabletopia. 
Um, and there's a search bar up here. So in the search bar, this is where if you're looking for a game, you can type it in here. So you could type in here around from the Tabletopia homepage and find it. This is also where you would type in a room number. So Chris has created a game. Do you want to type into chat the room number, Chris? And I uh, yeah, sure. Uh, um, join you in there. One second. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. I'm trying to click on my StreamYard window and it's not doing anything because that's not how it works. <laughs> hey, Dusto, do you want to play some hero rounds? Because we're looking for players, Dustin. So uh, interested. So, uh, Deb, I've uh, I sent you the room number across. I'm finding it a little bit tricky to get onto. Oh, no problem. I can get on StreamYard. Discord. Hang on, yeah. I got on Discord. No problem. So, so that's I, what you do. You create a room, um, mm -hmm. and then you, when you want to play a game, I can actually walk through that a little bit. But here, for now, I'm just going to paste in. This is the room number. Here, let me paste it into chat too, so that if anyone uh, wants to join, they can. I'm not, I think there's a limit, but I want to say we can have a, you know. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. So that's the room number. If anyone else wants to join. So if I type that in, it will find the room. It says that it's here realm. So I can click on that and it will bring me to the room. Um, and here I can, you know, join the game. Um, one thing that I will say is when you go to a game, I'm just going to go back for a second to the homepage. So if I were to just search here around here and say, I want to start a game with my friends. I just want to mention this because if you want to, after the fact, create your own game, it, there's a few nuances to it. So um, here it says that it's free. So that's how you know this is a free game. It says it's two player. This is where you can see how many players this, you know, here realms, you can play with more than two players, but that's how we have it set up right now. And you notice down here, and this is not uncommon, that we have this in English and German. So if you your native language isn't English, this is something else I really like about Tabletopia. A lot of games have them in multiple languages. We put our game up for Essenspiel, and we actually did uh, German demos, which was super fun. Not me, myself, but our awesome German team. And then here, one important thing is when you see here setups, is see over here, C5 more. These are put in in the order, I think, that they're created. So they're not always in an intuitive order. So you always want to say, see all of them to see, like, what is the best setup for you. So... For us, we have tournament use is just set up so we can have additional players in the room when we're showing a game. But if you want to set up here, um, you can just go to the two-player base game English. If you just want to play the base game, you're brand new, you're just checking it out. And then the two-player base game with character packs is here. You could actually use this setup and do either one. But if you just want to try out the base game, then I would recommend you click on the base game. So I'm not going to do that, but if I were to create this, it would give me a room number, which I could then in Discord or Facebook chat or whatever, I could send off to my friend and say, hey, come join me. Um, so Michael, if you want to play, if anyone wants to play, oh, Michael L would like to join. So the voice for the demo is, I mean, I could have them come into the StreamYard chat. Maybe that's easier because then we can all hear each other. Um, I will, um, I don't know how to send him a private message, though. Can I send a private message? Um, no, but that's okay. I'll let me give you the stream yard. Um, so Michael L, or if we have a few people that want to come in and do the demo, um, you can join us in the in in the stream. So if you join yep. that link, if you go to that link, that's stream yard, and it will bring you into the back end and I can add you in here. You can have your camera off if you don't want to show and if you, you know, if you'd rather not be on stream and not have your voice on stream, you know, we could do something in Discord. But I think the easiest thing is if we can hear everyone um, here on the stream, that would be fantastic. So Michael L, if you want to play or anyone else. Yeah, I see, that, uh, I see that, I see that, I think Dusto55, Dustin has uh, joined us in, uh, is a spectator. So if, uh, if you'd like to play, uh, I can add another seat. If you'd like to join, jump in on that link to the stream and come. I, Dusto is a experienced streaming aficionado. He streams more than I do, I think. Okay. Um, he's a big Star Wars player. So I, well, I'm going to hand off to you, Chris, because I've just been gabbing, gabbing, gabbing. Okay. So I don't know if you want to share your screen. I'm going to take my screen okay. off. Okay. Yeah. I will. If people uh, have questions, please ask questions as we go. This is meant to be educational because we are finding that a lot of people just 
had never used Tabletopia. And like, once you try it, you're like, oh my God, like there's a lot of incredible games on here and the yeah. graphics are great. And it's, you know, pretty easy to use, but it's not that easy. That's why we're doing this demo. It looks, I think it looks easier than it is. Once you get into playing, you're like, how do I flip a card over? How do I shuffle? So Chris, I'm gonna hand off to Chris, who's an expert. And I'm gonna relax and okay. you know, play some Hero Realms or watch you guys play Hero Realms. Sounds good. Okay, no problem. Dustin okay. can't join, but yeah, if, but uh, you know, carry if you on want, spectating. You want to in, and if you don't, Chris and I will play. But if you decide you want to jump in a little later, just jump onto that stream link. Well, and, and I, I see uh, Mike has already uh, taken a seat. So uh, I've given you my uh, screen share. So if you want to add that up onto the stream. Uh, so what we're looking at right now is the lobby to the game. So I already set up the game through the, that link uh, or through the page that uh, Dave was showing where you then click uh, play online. You can play a Tabletopia uh, sort of hot seat or where you uh, pass and play, where you're able to uh, play with multiple people on the same computer, but then you can also play with people online. And so that's what we have over here. Now I've chosen to set it up with the uh, tourna tournament uh, setup so that I can add additional seats if needed, uh, you know, if I'm not the one who's actually playing. But uh, like uh, they were saying uh, over here, when you click on the little drop down here, you can then choose what type of setup. So you can play it in German, if that's your uh, preferred language or in English. And then you can choose the different setups here. And again, the base game being just uh, the base game on a turn or with character packs and then the tournament ones allowing you to add up to four players uh so that uh, you can have you know someone running the game for you if if, if that's what you need to do i see uh, brian has uh, joined us as a spectator uh, if there's anyone else uh, on the stream who's wanting to play uh hop in and take a seat right now uh if not uh, deb you're welcome to take that other seat while i uh, sort of run the game for bo both of you all right. I don't know if we have anyone here. And, um, okay, I'll go ahead and jump in, but let me find the room again. Okay. okay. Yeah, just then it, it'll be easier for me to to teach the game while both of you focusing on being able to play. So. Yep. It'll be good. I'm looking forward to learning how to play yep. Hero Realms. <laughs> And so what, what you do once you get into the lobby as a player who's joining another game is that then uh, you'll have the different seats laid out here and then you just need to click on that and uh, take a seat. Uh, I've already started the game ahead of time uh, just because it makes it a little quicker to load on my end. Uh, but once everyone's in there, you can then hit ready and then you'll start the game. So there'll be a ready button over here to get things going. So I'm gonna hit continue and that's gonna move me into the, the game itself. Uh, again, I loaded it ahead of time, but sometimes it takes a little while to get loaded uh, because it's running all of this from the browser. So sometimes you just have to be patient and wait on that. Uh, once that's set up, uh, the other players will also get an indication and will start loading on their end. Uh, and so it'll take a little while and then you'll get uh, everyone uh, appearing on the, the main game. So we'll just wait for a little bit while this gets started. Gem from Italy, nice, hello. And I just posted the links again, so if anyone wants to join the game as a spectator or player, you go to Tabletopia and you type in that room number that I posted there. And if you want to join in the stream, you, and as a player speaker, you click on the stream yard. We are looking for a couple of players. If anyone's interested, you can follow those instructions. Okay. So it's loaded up on my end here, and then uh, you can check to see uh, whether players have been able to log in or not into the game yet. Uh, you'll see with the little indicators up here whether they're logged in, uh, and then uh, you'll also be able to start seeing them uh, moving around and uh, with their cursor within the game space. So what we have set up here uh, is the, the base game set up in the center of the, the area here, and then all of the different character packs, uh, which there are five of them that we have set up for each of the players. So uh, we can uh, pick and choose whether we want to play with the character packs or not, but uh, wait to see. Um, Deb, are you uh, in the game yet, or are you still loading? I, I... I think I'm in, but I just have another player that wants to join. Oh, okay. so I'm sending him the information right now. Um, let me get him the StreamYard information. And then he's, he's joining Tabletop. It's actually Eric Slauson, which I have played a couple of his games in the last couple of weeks, and uh, I okay. love them. He is a game designer. Okay, we can, great. We can chat about some of his games too. Um, 
Okay, I'm just looking for the stream. And so uh, what can happen is if uh, you load into a game and maybe you're getting a change of players or need to take care of anything uh, back in the lobby, uh, there's a little menu that drops down up here in the top corner. You can click on that, and then it gives you a couple of different options of how to uh, adjust or change things. Um, the game. You can restart it if it hasn't loaded properly or you need to reload it. Uh, and then you can also go back to the lobby, which then uh, we can go there and check to see uh, who's seated or not. And so uh, if you said that there was another person who's coming on to join us, what you would then want to do is go back and uh, uh, step out from your seat and then have the other person then uh, hop in to take their seat. So am I showing that I'm in here or not? So do you need me to leave? So how do I leave? So what I was saying is you go to the, the menu up in the top uh, left-hand corner and yeah. go back to the lobby. And so it'll bring you back to that lobby screen. And once you're there, you can then, uh, I think, leave, leave your seat. Yeah, so you leave your seat. The seat will then be open for then someone else to hop in. All right, uh, it's now open. Um, and so if the other player, if you want to get into the lobby, and then just click on take your seat and then that should load you into the game and we'll get started shortly well while, while we're doing that and once i'm uh, back into the game i can actually get a, a explanation for the game started uh while uh the, if you want to follow up with the other player to make sure we oh, wow. everyone's loaded in but i can get uh, started with our explanation so in hero realms uh which can play it, uh, two to four with the uh, core game and i think up to six uh, with uh, additional uh, character packs or a second copy of the game. And so uh, here we're playing the two-player version. Uh, Hero Realms is a, a deck-building game, which for those who have played that, you might be familiar with that mechanic. But for those who haven't, uh, what happens in the, the game is you're going to be starting out with uh, your own personal deck of cards. Uh, because we're set up for the uh, character packs, each of us will, each of the players will then choose a character that they're going to play as, and they will then have a starting deck of 10 cards, which they'll then be placing over here uh, on their uh, their player area. In the base, uh, base game, uh, you will then also have a preset of 10 cards, which you will then, uh, both players will have the same set of cards, and then they will also be, uh, you know, setting that uh, up in their player area. So, what happens uh, during the course of the game is you'll be drawing uh, a hand of uh, five cards on your turn to be able to then play those cards for uh, several different abilities and effects that those cards might have. So if we look out here, we have the uh, market row, which shows us a couple of examples of some of the cards that are going to become available throughout the course of the game. And then there are some basic cards that you'll start out with uh, during uh, with your initial deck. Then you get to play. Uh, multiple cards during your turn. Uh, those five cards that you have in your hand, plus possible additional cards if you're able to draw some more up, and you'll then be playing them out into your play area. And once you've played out your turn, then uh, discarding uh, several of the cards back into your discard pile. And so, through the course of the game, you'll be playing through your uh, personal deck uh, and having cards discarded into the discard pile. But one of the cool things with deck building is that you're going to be able to add additional cards into that deck of cards you're playing with. And so then through the course of the game, getting a, a more powerful uh, deck of cards with uh, cards that are able to combine and ha have special abilities that work together with other cards you've added in. And that's really the exciting part of deck building is that you start out with a very simple, small deck of 10 cards and then grow that to, to the different possibilities that come out uh, through, the, through the game. So how you go about getting cards is from this market row that you see out here in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the game board. So we have uh, five cards that are randomly uh, dealt out from the main deck of cards, and these are the initial offering that players are going to be able to uh, purchase from. We also then have a deck of uh, fire gems on the side here, which are, uh, if you give me a second, are uh, are cards that are always available to be purchased. So if there's nothing else in the market row that you want to uh, take, you can always uh, take a fire gem instead. And so uh, you are going to be able to purchase these cards by playing cards from your hand that provide you with coins. So if you see here on the fire gem card, we have the co uh, coin symbol of here, which is the currency that we'll then be using to purchase cards. So in the top right hand corner of each card, we have the cost of the card. And then 
uh, down in the main area uh, on the bottom of the card, we have the abilities and effects that that card will have when we play it on our turn. So, for instance, here the fire gem. If you play, if you were to draw that card in your hand and on turn on your turn play it down, it would then give you two coin that you could then spend. And so then on your turn you could then start spending coin to purchase some of the cards that are out here on the market. As you can see, uh, cards have a different uh, cost depending on on how powerful and strong the card is. And so uh, you can play as many cards as you have that provide you with money, and then you can pick and choose how you want to spend that, that money to purchase cards. In, uh, when, when purchasing cards, uh, you might be wanting to save up a bunch of the, your money and being able to spend that on a, a single larger card, or sometimes you want to get a, a combination of maybe smaller cards. So for instance, here we could get bribed for three, and then as soon as you purchase a card from the market row, you can then take one from the top of the deck, flip it over, and then replace that uh, slot where you took, took the card from. Whenever you purchase a card, it then goes directly into your discard pile. So you won't have access to it uh, immediately. Instead, it'll go into your discard pile and then become available to you once you've played through your entire, uh, entire deck. Now, initially, your deck's only 10 cards uh, deep, so it's going to be a quick turnaround when you start getting those cards that you've got into a discard pile. One of the strategies in deck building games is managing the size of your deck so that it's not too large, so that you're not waiting to get those really powerful cards for too long. And there are some uh, abilities to uh, start clearing out cards from your deck, so that can be a strategy that can be used uh, to make it more efficient. So once you've uh, purchased a card, if you have additional coins left over, you're then going to be able to spend that to purchase more cards if there are any that uh, are within the price range of the coins that you have. So uh, just because you've generated you know, eight or, or ten uh, coins uh, during a turn doesn't mean you need to spend all that on a single card. You can mix and match and split between different cards uh, out in the market. Okay, so uh, we'll uh, flip that and add that back into our deck. And so a couple things that uh, I'm doing on Tabletopia that uh, you might not be familiar with, uh, being able to pick up cards, you're just uh, clicking and dragging them. Uh, picking up off of the deck, you just click and drag as well. If you're wanting to place things back onto a deck, you need to wait for the deck to turn uh, this orange color where it's highlighted, and then it'll add the card on top of the, the deck. If you don't do it before then, instead the card will just drop off to the side. So you do need to wait in Tabletopia for that to get highlighted and then it's added into the deck. Another uh, quick feature that I'm going to show, and this will be especially useful because of the fact that we're going to be shuffling our decks often, is if you right-click on any object, you're then going to get a uh, context menu that gives you a bunch of different options. So uh, for shuffling, we have these two little uh, arrows that are crossing each other. That's the shuffle uh, command. And then if you click that, it shuffles up the deck. OK, so that's, uh, that covers the ability to purchase different cards. And so that's the one symbol that you're going to see uh, on the, uh, the bottom half of some of the cards, being able to purchase. The next thing you'll see is the ability to attack either opponents or other champions that the opponents have played. So th this is the symbol for attack. And in the game of Hero Realms, the objective is to try and diminish uh, your opponent's health down to zero. So uh, the health of the opponent is shown used using these uh, potion symbols. Uh, so over here on our different characters, you'll see that each character comes with a, a set amount of uh, initial health. Uh, and these are the character packs that I'm showing that are able to be purchased and added on to the base game. Uh, in the base game, I believe you start out with a, a set of uh, 50 health. And uh, in the physical game itself, uh, you, it the game comes with uh, a counter a system where you have cards that are able to then keep track of that value. Uh, here in the game, we actually are going to be using these special uh, counter uh, cards that are then you're able to add or remove uh, health based on what uh, happens during the course of the game. So as you can see in the middle, it's then telling us that uh, 58 uh, starting out for a ranger, and then you'd be increasing or de decreasing that value during the game. So, uh, so we have the uh, attack value. Uh, that when you play a card with that on it, you are then able to direct that damage towards your opponent or possibly towards your opponent's champions. 
So I'll quickly get into uh, what a champion is. We have a champion card over here, which you can uh, purchase uh, during the game. Champions are identified by the fact that they're going to have a shield down here in the bottom right-hand corner, as well as up in the uh, text description of the card, it's going to say champion on it. And so champions uh, are really sort of special cards that are played out and kept in front of the player for as long as they are able to survive uh, out in the play area. So most other cards are instead going to be played and at the end of the turn discarded into the discard pile, the exception to that being the champions. So champions are then kept out in front of the player and on the opponent's turn can be the target of some of the damage that the opponent is doing. So if the opponent attacks uh, with uh, enough damage, they can target it towards the champion, and the champion then has a value that needs to be uh, either equal to or surpassed to be able to then uh, stun the champion and have it then put into the discard pile. Okay? I'll get uh, back to champions and explain a little bit more about some of their other abilities, uh, but I'm going to carry on with uh, the, the different symbols that we see coming out on the cards. So... Uh, one of the other type of symbols that we'll uh, see, and I'll see if I can find one quickly that has it, is we'll have cards, well, not, not having any luck, but uh, in the, the middle of uh, some of the cards, you'll also see the health symbol, So, which is this little potion, uh, green potion symbol. Oh, here we go. We have some of the abilities here. So uh, you'll, you'll have then the potion symbol showing, and whenever that happens and you play a card with that on it, you will then increase your uh, health value by uh, whatever value is shown on that card. So that's another way for us to be able to then get um, uh, increase our health. OK, so those are some of the basic uh, abilities that you'll see on cards. And then there are also another variety of abilities that will show up that will be written in text. So they'll be uh, uh, somewhat self-explanatory. And as we're playing through, I'll review the cards that are out here in the market row and explain any of them uh, if we come into some new concepts so that we can start playing uh, as we go along. But those are things like uh, being able to draw cards, being able to uh, remove cards from your deck uh, through sacrificing. So whenever you get rid of a card uh, completely and, and remove it from the game, it then comes out into this uh, sacrifice pile over here. And we also have some cards which uh, are going to have this little uh, trash can symbol, which is the sacrifice ability. So that, that allows you to then remove that card from your deck, and uh, it will reduce the size of your deck, as well as then giving you maybe uh, some special ability that's a one-time use. Uh, so you get, for, for instance, with the Fire Gem, if you choose to sacrifice it, you then get the uh, three, three uh, damage that it deals, but then it is removed and placed into the sacrifice pile, which could be a benefit to you because you were wanting to thin out your deck and make it more concentrated on the more powerful cards that you have in it. So uh, so that's your sacrifice ability and how you'd be clearing out cards over here. And Chris, so, Chris, can I interrupt you for one moment? Go ahead. Um, so Eric joined us and Michael L joined us, but he's having some technical difficulties. Okay. So he, I think, I gave him the option that he could play in Tabletopia, but not be on the stream with his voice because he knows how to play. But okay. I don't have an answer yet back. But if he drops out, we'll be looking for another player. So if anyone else that's watching is interested in playing, please post a message in the chat and we can you know, get you added when Michael drops out. Also, these games are relatively short. So if you know you don't join right now, you could join later as well. Yeah, well, it looks yeah. like Felis might want to play. So Felis, if you want to play, um, it looks like we might have some people that want to play. I'm not sure from your answers if you want to play. So please say, I want to play <laughs> if you want. I got an emoji <laughs> and a wave. Um, but if you if you guys want to play, let me know and we can. Um, can you kick Mike out? OK, Felis would like to play because Mike, is that okay. Mike? It's hard for me to tell on the screen. Is yeah. he still there? I'm just going to quickly switch over so I'm able to yeah, remove so people by kicking. Ten, and then, so, and we can't add a fourth person in there. We, uh, we could add a fourth person. Uh, again, it would be the, it'd still just be a two player game, but we can't yeah. add an additional. Maybe we can add them. I mean, maybe we can play a second game after that. So I think yeah. another person wants to play, but. But for now, that sounds like we have two players, Felis and Eric, who joined. And okay. Eric, I just want to say that you your games have been the star of my game nights. I've played Tattoo Stories and Monstrosity in the last couple of weeks, and they were awesome and super fun. So I'm excited to have you on here. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> Welcome. 
And so I've opened up uh, seats uh, within the lobby. Uh, so I just went back there and we have the two seats okay. available. Uh, so if anyone's, uh, just add that uh, room number and then add yourself in and we'll yeah. be ready to go. Felix, if you can go ahead and join that the game, that would be great. And, and Cold, if you want to play, you can go ahead and join, but you'll need to wait till the next round and then you can play as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'll, I'll try and finish up our explanation quickly now so that we can get the first game in and hopefully get that second one in, in as well. Okay. Awesome. So I'm hopping back from the lobby back into the game. And so I was explaining that you can then sacrifice uh, cards to be able to get special abilities. You'll also have some uh, cards abilities that will then uh, force an, uh, a card to be sacrificed or a variety of different things that will come up against uh, while playing the game. So that gets us into uh, a, a basic uh, explanation. One thing that we'll also be seeing on some of these cards, you'll see that they have a different colored outline. So that outline indicates which uh, faction they are part of. And so uh, for example, here we have uh, four cards that are of the uh, bl the blue faction over here, and I don't off the uh, top of my head remember all the names of them. But we have uh, we have uh, some of these blue cards, which when you play uh, a blue card that then has a faction symbol down in the bottom half of it, it then allows you to uh, have a second ability, which is able to be triggered only if you play another blue card during that same turn. Uh, that could be that you already have a champion out there that is uh, of the same faction or a card in your hand that matches that same color. And this gives you an additional layer of strategy because while you're uh, purchasing cards out here from the market row, you want to maybe try and get cards of similar colors, uh, so same the same factions, so that they can have those combo abilities of being able to play uh, both the top and bottom halves of some of the uh, abilities for those cards because of the uh, factions and being able to have two cards of the same type being played in the same turn. Okay, so uh, that covers um, most of the uh, general cards that you're going to be playing. Now, uh, back to what the uh, champions do. So the champions stay uh, permanently uh, in your play area for as long as they are able to until your opponent uh, uh, either uh, plays enough damage to then take them out, or some champions have maybe uh, sacrifice abilities that then allow them to uh, do something special if you do so. So... Uh, while they're sitting out there, they are then able to perform an action on each turn. And that's shown by this little symbol over here, which is uh, your ability to, uh, I think, to en enable the champion to perform this uh, ability on them. And then you will uh, just take the card and we'll be uh, turning it, and I, you'll be turning it using the, the Q or E key. So the Q uh, rotating it to its side and the E uh, rotating it back uh, face, face up. Or, or face forward. And so whenever you use a champion's ability, you are then going to turn it sideways and then be able to perform whatever it has on there. When you do that, uh, it will then remain that way until the beginning of your, uh, your next turn, I believe. I'm now chipping on myself right now. Uh, and so then you'll be uh, preparing the card again to be able to be used on your following turn. So, uh, they are then being able to be used once per turn and uh, then reset for the following turn to be able to use the second time. Now, there are also two different types of champions uh, that we have uh, in, in the game. So the one type, which is your standard champion, has just a gray shield shown down here on the bottom, and that means that that's how much damage needs to be done to be able to, uh, to, be able to stun the champion. The other type of champion is a guard type champion. And with these ones, they have the additional benefit of protecting both the player and any other regular champions from being the target of any damage. So for instance here, uh, Tyranor the Devourer would allow the player, if, it's, if, if he's played out uh, into the play area, to be protected. And so would need to be defeated first before the player would be the, able to be the target of any additional damage. So the opponent would need to be able to cause uh, six or more damage to be able to take uh, that champion out and then uh, would direct six of the damage to that champion and then whatever else they have would be able to then start being directed towards the player or towards other champions that are out on uh, in their play area. So that's the special ability that comes along with uh, guard, uh, guard champions. Now, the one distinction we need to be, uh, make clear is that whenever a champion is defeated or stunned, 
it is then uh, placed into the discard pile of the players. So the player doesn't lose that champion. It's just taken away from them from their player and then will need to be played on a future turn once they, it, it gets shuffled through uh, their personal deck. That is different from then sacrifice, which is where you would then remove it from the game and place it out in the sacrifice pile here. And those specific cards that state that something is sacrificed would cause that or any cards that have the, the little uh, trash can symbol that uh, is uh, indicating that you can sacrifice it for that special ability. Okay, so that covers, uh, I think, most of it. And if we run into any questions, I'll cover them while we're playing so we can get started. The, the last thing I just need to quickly cover is that we're going to be playing with these uh, character packs that we have over here. So each player will then choose uh, one of the five different character packs. And what we have out in the character pack, we have a, uh, I believe it's a double-sided card uh, with uh, the character on it. So uh, here we have the ranger, we have a thief. Yeah, yeah. in the physical game, it, the character cards have different art on each side, so you mm -hmm. can pick the art. In the digital game, it's you pick one or it's two digital cards. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll be choosing uh, which which card we want to play with, and then uh, placing that over on the uh, on our board over here. And then we also have the uh, we have the ability and the skill that comes along with that character. So the ability here is a one-time uh, action that you can perform. As you see, uh, all it has is the little uh, trash can symbol. So that's indicating that it can be used and then sacrificed to do whatever it, it's able to do. And then you get to use that ability. And then the other thing that comes along with the character is its skill. And a skill is able to be used multiple times throughout the game. But each time it's used, it is then has a, a certain cost to it. And so if you see here, it has the same uh, arrow symbol, which shows that you need to then turn the card sideways, and then it will get prepared on a future turn. Uh, and then, But at the same time, also need to pay two coin to then be able to use the ability that's shown in the middle of the card. And then the final thing we'll be adding is the specific uh, character decks, which is a set of 10 un uh, unique cards that are uh, uh, specific to that character and get our players started out. Uh, so uh, if Eric and Felis, uh, if you want to... Uh, take the cards that you're going to be playing with. So have a look at the different uh, characters that you ha have out here, and then take them and lay them out in your player area. And so, uh, Eric, you'll be uh, playing over here on the, the red side, so you'll be laying them out on the, the opposing side of the of the game board. And maybe you might want to just explain, maybe you did this already, but where each thing, like how, to, how do you get your character and move what you need to okay. move where on the player board. And sure. I'm also going to suggest when um, you, when they start playing to kind of walk them through their first turn or two, because I know Eric joined after you had already started. And yes. Was, I'm not sure. I think okay. she was watching the stream the whole time. Thank you. You're, this is going awesome. We're getting a lot of positive comments in the good, chat. Good, good. Yeah, I will. I will be. That's why I was uh, wanting to not be one of the players because then I can f uh, f mm -hmm. focus on helping everyone throughout the game. And those that were are able to uh, ask questions either through the chat or uh, on the the voice uh, channel, uh, f feel free to ask questions throughout the game, and I, I will be uh, guiding that first playthrough. So, and for some reason, sometimes Tabletopia is uh, loading some interesting glitches on it. Okay, so. Uh, uh, if you have uh, a character that you've chosen, and for the red player, it's the same character, same five characters are shown on the uh, right hand, on the right hand side here. So you can, it's exactly the same five that we have over on the left. Uh, you can then have them already organized uh, in the correct direction for you. And so what you're going to want to do, why is it loading badly? Uh, let me just refresh the browser. Quickly. Yeah, I'm seeing like a weird pyramid. Yeah. yeah, there's some glitching that's coming uh, coming through, and it happened a little uh, little moment before as well. So I'm just quickly loading that again. I but personally so like to play the wizard because you get a cat yeah. in your starting deck. <laughs> I don't like when anyone kills my. I mean, stuns my cat. Stuns your cat. Kicks me off. Yeah, and that's a, a, a very important clarification: is that any uh, uh, champion that's uh, it's is stunned and not uh, not killed or sacrificed whenever they're taken out. So uh, it's something that sometimes uh, people mistake the fact that they think that it's removed from the game, but you, you continue getting that champion coming out each time you want uh, to use it. So, okay. Uh, so I see Eric dropped off. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to join us. So uh, I see Felis is getting uh, set up over here. So place the, uh, the character card uh, on the side here. 
and then uh, the ability and skill, as well as the uh, the uh, deck itself. Uh, I see where you may be having a little bit of difficulty picking up the full deck. So there's a little bit of uh, a fiddliness when it comes to um, Tabletopia. So to pick up a deck, you're going to click and uh, see. Even I can't get it. So you, it's a little bit different from Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator, you would click on the card, the deck, uh, and click and hold on it, and it would then select it. In Tabletopia, instead, you are clicking on the deck, and then once it has the highlighted symbol, uh, the highlighted uh, glow around it, you can then pick it up completely and move it all as a single deck. Hmm. So over here, we have. So the other thing that you you're having difficulty with there is the fact that when you're placing a card over another card, you need to wait until it becomes highlighted. And once that happens, then it'll actually create a proper deck from the cards. So it takes a little bit longer uh, for each card to then be added in. But then once it's highlighted, you should see the, the count of the cards uh, shown when you put your cursor over it. And so then, so oh, I should should leave you to, to being able to set this up here quickly. So you to select the whole thing, you're clicking on it, seeing the little glow that comes uh, up around it. And then once you have that, then you can pick up the entire a set of cards and then place them down. All of these are controls you will need to get used to because we will be shuffling through that deck a couple times. And then once you have it set up, you can right click on it and hit shuffle and that'll get, get your shuffle on. Okay, and so uh, here uh, I can help you. Uh, so uh, Eric, if you would like to, if the red player would like to choose uh, which, uh, which card they would like as their starting uh, character, and then I'll uh, move everything else for you across okay. to your player area. So if you're wanting the, the wizard, so you're just placing that over where we have the health area. Then we'll put the ability card over here. We'll put the skill card over here. And then we click. So again, we click once. You will see the highlight. And then we'll click and drag to then be able to move the full deck. Ah, OK? OK. OK. Oh, and you're on with the, the with voice on our stream. So if you have any questions, just uh, speak up. So yeah, uh, picking. And then what's nice about the setup we have here is all of the cards snap into their locations. So if they're over a location that has a snap area, you can then just let go, and it should normally snap to it. OK, so now that we have both players set up, uh, we can go ahead and shuffle both of your starting decks. And now in Tabletopia, uh, you're going to be able to deal yourself a certain number of cards by right-clicking and then going down to the draw uh, option and then clicking the number of cards you want to draw. Now, we're going to have one player uh, be the starting player. And so this is only on their first turn that they instead will only be able to draw uh, three cards. And so that gives the, uh, it just kind of mitigates the fact that they're getting the first turn in the game. So three cards for the starting player. And we'll have yellow start since uh, uh, that's the view that I'm looking from right now. So uh, Felix will start with. Uh, three cards. What you can see up in the top here is that the three cards are shown also uh, so you know how many cards a player has in their hand. And those cards then come out uh, in the hand of that player. So I, what I'll do is I'll quickly draw a couple cards just to show us uh, on the stream. So what we're looking at here is the cards that are then drawn. And then you can uh, scroll through them to look at them. Uh, with Tabletopia, uh, the ability to zoom into anything is with the space bar. So you hit the space bar, it then gets into a zoomed in view. So you can see all of the detail and being able to read things more clearly. And then when you hit the space bar a second time, it'll then uh, go back to the main view. And so with the cards that you have dealt, you then can look through and see what you want to be able to play. Uh, because we're doing a learning game, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to then put the card down on the table and I'll be able to explain on your turn. And we will go through each turn slowly so that we can get a, uh, comfortable with being able to play uh, play the cards. So uh, Eric, you can also draw a, a set of five cards. So you'll be uh, starting with five. And again, right clicking on uh, the deck, going down to the draw uh, button, and then choosing how many cards you want to draw. And once you yeah. have those, it'll pop up in uh, in your hand. OK. Ooh, very neat. Yeah, so then you have all your cards and spacebar being able to uh, zoom in and highlight. And that makes it easier to, instead of having to sort of zoom in and out of things within the game, is just using the spacebar to be able to view things uh, quickly. So then you can see what all the cards are out on the market, as well as what you have in your hand uh, and what your opponent's been able to play. OK, so let's get started with the uh, yellow player. Uh, you're going to be playing those uh, three cards. Uh, 
and again, you, you can uh, you can play them in any order. You can do the different abilities uh, in any combination. Uh, you can be purchasing first or, or using the damage that you're dealing first. Uh, so, uh, and so, what? Okay, uh, that possibly went back into your hand. Yeah, there we go. So, playing out this uh, first card. So, those are your first three cards. So, starting out with a, a total of two. And so, right now, uh, the only card out in the market uh, that uh, would be possible is the Death Cultist. But you could also instead choose to purchase a Fire Gem, uh, which is then going to generate uh, coins for you in future turns. And then the other card you have is a champion. So we already have a champion coming out, which is great. And that's what's fun about the character uh, this character packs, is those decks are specialized to each character and get you really started and going in the game uh, quite a bit quicker than your, your the standard game, uh, and also with those special abilities and stuff that you have as well. So yeah, I see you're, you're checking out your uh, the skill of the cleric. So the skill requires you to pay two coin as well. So that's another option for using that money and allows you to then perform its ability. So for here, we have Bless. It allows the target player to gain three health. And then that player's champion will also gain one defense until the end of their next turn. And so uh, the champion that you have over here, you'll actually then leave out to the side here uh, because uh, you've played it. Uh, you're then uh, doing one damage by uh, by um, activating the champion. And so then uh, the, re the red player would then take one damage being, being able to reduce it by right-clicking on the uh, car, the health card, and then there's a plus or minus, and then just go in minus one to it to get it down to 49. Awesome. Uh, and I can do that if uh, anyone's having any difficulty with that. And then the other two coin cards which are played, uh, you use to then get the fire gem. So both of them then get discarded at the end of the turn. But the champion itself gets left out here because uh, it stays until um, it is defeated, uh, it, until it is stunned. Uh, and put it into your discard deck. Okay, so uh, that's the end of my turn. So okay. I'm going to move my cards to discard, yeah. or you can. Okay, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yep. Yeah. So you'll just add those discards over there, and then the uh, champion is placed over here. The one clarification I wanted to check is when the champion is uh, returned to... And I should know this. I'm just <laughs> I'm drawing a blank on it. Um, so I'm just quickly checking when it was... Because the other thing with uh, champions is when they are used. So uh, when they they have the champions, especially ones that have this uh, guard ability, when they have been used, they then don't uh, they don't uh, guard anymore because they are being active, uh, and so the guard ability is uh, only when they are in the prepared state. But what is mm. important to know is when they uh, get reset. And this is something I have. Uh, I think they still guard, um, but the there's a card that can prepare them again during a turn, which would allow you to use that ability again during a single turn. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, and I, I expect our designers will add more things. To will chime in and, and, and scold me for the fact that I'm not, I don't know this. Add a couple more times, um, but I can check on that really quick. But I think. Okay. It, I think it does. I, I also can never remember whether it <laughs> prepares at the end of your turn. You yeah, know, the timing the, of it is what is important, right? The beginning or the end of your turn. Um, but you will, it definitely still will act as a guard um, when it's your turn. So mm -hmm. someone's p piping in. I think champions get prepared at end of turn. I don't have a rule book handy, but. Okay, so yes, yeah, so they, they then, okay, they, they get prepared at the end of the, that player's turn. So once they've used during the turn, they can't be used again, but then they get prepared uh, at the end of their turn. That, 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 that would make sense because otherwise they would not be guarding as often afterwards. Um, again, I'm going to continue uh, looking into that, but before, while we do that, uh, you, you can then prepare that. We'll, we'll play that way for, for this at least this first turn unless I find something that says differently. And then so the red player can start playing. So you've uh, got the five cards that you've been dealt, and then mm -hmm. you can choose how you want to play them. Uh, if you have any questions, you can lay them down, and we can sort of uh, pick and choose, and I can guide you through uh, the different options you have based on those cards. Sure. And how many um, I'm uh, playing? How many of these? My whole hand? So you can play your whole hand, and, and it's just the order in which you play cards uh, would really be important. But as we're sort of doing a learning game, you can lay them down, and we can I can guide you through, you know, maybe what sequence would be uh, best for you. Sure. 
I did get confirmation that that mm -hmm. um, it does prepare at the end of your turn. Yeah. Um, but if it was expended during, um, it would not be acting as a guard if it was expending. But right now, so if there was a card that would expend your guard while you were um, your opponent's turn, right? If during, on your opponent's turn. Yeah. Then that would be the case. But right now, that's never that that's not a situation yeah. that happens in the current game. But you know, I think it, it might eventually happen. <laughs> so it's good to know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just for everyone's clarification, what's happening there is that the the champion was used on uh, on Yellow's turn, uh, was then uh, rotated, and then at the end of the turn, when when Yellow was putting all the cards in the discard, was also when then that champion uh, was uh, put back to be prepared and was able to then guard uh, with a, a guarding with a value of one for this uh, follower. Okay, so uh, so red, you're you're playing your uh, three coins, and mm -hmm. then I see you have two more cards which you can then play after that if you want, or uh, in either either order if you uh, as you see fit. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this bribe here. Okay. Yeah, so bribe gets you three coins when it's played, and then also when you play it alongside another blue card uh, of the same faction, you then get to use that ability, which is put the next action you acquired this turn on top of your deck. And what's really uh, useful about that is the fact that uh, most cards are going into your discard pile when you acquire them. But in this, you if you acquire specifically an action card, and action cards are highlighted by the text that's at the top of the card, you can then instead put it at the top of your deck so you'll get its use almost straight away. Ah, so, OK. Yeah, Thanks. so that's, that's a useful Perfect. card. OK, and then each time we have a card uh, taken from the market row, we just add another one in its place. And that card becomes available to purchase uh, straight away. So if you add additional coin, you could then purchase it. But at, at eight, it's probably a little uh, pricey for right now. So sure. you've played the, the three coin. You still have your uh, two other cards, which you can choose mm -hmm. to play. So this one um, uh, it looks to, to specifically apply to um, action um, when I acquire an action card. Yes, so uh, so this we could have actually used uh, for what you were purchasing here. So uh, what, what, because the bribe card is an action card, so this card allows that uh, the purchase of it to cost one less, and it actually provides one of the coins for it anyway. So what, what would happen here? Ah, uh, OK. And I'm just going to cl uh, clarify this for, for everyone out there. If you had played that card and a coin, this would have generated two 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 coins uh, mm. and reduced the cost of bribe to two, so that would have that uh, both of these cards being played would be enough to purchase bribe, and okay. then you would be left over with another three coin to purchase another card from the market room. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, so th th that's quite a useful uh, way to be able to reduce the cost of action cards as they come out, and again for everyone who's following along, uh, the action. Uh, Keyword is shown at the top uh, in the title of the card, and so uh, th that's the, that's the case as well for champions. Uh, and so there's a lot of little keywords that then appear in that top uh, title of the card that can really guide uh, you know some of the choices that come along in the game. Okay. okay. So with uh, with three coin, you uh, could purchase the uh, Death Cultus or a Fire Gem. Uh, unfortunately, all the other cards are a little bit more. Uh, expensive and any sure. coins that you can't use on on your turn uh aren't saved up for another turn they are just uh, sort of uh, thrown away or wasted uh, for that turn so mm -hmm. depending on your strategy most of the time you want to be you know using as much of that uh, money that you generated to purchase cards but sometimes there might be nothing on offer that you really are wanting and keeping a, a, a thin deck that isn't too cluttered with a bunch of different cards can also be a strategy. But right here at the beginning, it's worth sort of adding stuff in and seeing where you go with it, and then uh, you know, developing sure. as as it goes along. All okay. right. So I think I'm going to grab this death cultist here. Okay. So you can click and That's add that to your discard. Two. Okay. And so when you're adding it, you're uh, you're also looking for the little highlight so that it then. Okay. And then it rotates and sits right into that. Uh, and then, right. so now that we've all of my money. Yep, yeah, that is all all of your money. And the one thing, because we're playing with the character decks, just to remind you, is you always have the option of this skill ability here, which is uh, to reduce uh, reduce your health by one and uh, reduce health by one. That that's an interesting ability. I hadn't picked yeah. up on the Deb. Would you? Be able to. Uh, I'm not as uh, familiar with the character pack, so the 
the fact well, that it's... Well, I mean, it, you reduce your health by one, but you get to draw a card. Oh, oh okay. Oh, card, I see. Yeah, it's so, valuable, but you take a hit on... But, but, it, but it is to the... the by um, one. Okay, yeah. so it is to the character who is playing. And that. you have to pay two gold. So the expend little arrow and two gold. So yeah. you expend, so it's once per turn, and you have to pay two gold. But you know, when you know you have a card in your deck yeah. that you really want to get, and you right. know, when you get cards and you want to get your ally abilities, you know, that's the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, if you're trying to get ally abilities activated and combos, another reason why you might choose to purchase a less expensive card in the trade mm -hmm. deck. I, I watch my husband play Star Rounds and he's a much more advanced <laughs> player um, yeah. I am. And how many times he just chooses not to buy anything like shocks me. <laughs> Is there a, um, a, a gather function? So there's a it? multiple selection uh, ability, which is if you hold the shift key and then click and drag across cards, uh, and I'm just going to do this on, on my oh. end to, to show everyone. Uh, so you can click and drag multiple cards. And then if you put them over the, I'm hoping this is going to work the way I assume it does, is you uh, put them over the deck that you want to place them in. Mm -hmm. Once it highlights, you then let go, and then they all stack into that deck. Uh, excellent. So that allows us to then be able to discard all of those cards uh, quickly uh, after you're done. Okay. Nice. Perfect. So uh, that that then uh, ends your turn. And so, uh, Yellow, you can uh, draw five cards, and you can actually do that uh, at the end. After you've discarded cards, you can draw those five uh, then straight away and start looking at what cards you're going to want to play on your, uh, on your next turn. Okay? Okie dokie. Uh... Okay. And so, yeah, you have two cards left over because, of course, on your first turn, you only got to play three instead of five. Okay. Okay, so lots of lots of money. <laughs> right, so that's four. I'm just having a quick look at what's yeah, available. Da, 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 da. Yes. Can you tell if your opponent's drawn their five cards when you're Yes, yeah, so that's uh, that's shown up on the uh, on the little uh, avatars for each of the players. I There's see. a little uh, card symbol on the side here, and it has the number of cards that they currently have in their hand. So uh, right now, uh, Yellow had drawn five, but had played mm. then four of them out here on the, the table. So one of them still uh, left in their hand. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I am playing this one, and I'm choosing to use it for coin rather okay. than yep. for health. Um, since I only have one champion to play, I do not get both abilities. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the text at the bottom here that you're describing. So uh, yeah, so that would such, get you up to six. I am taking this lovely card here. Okay, so the smash and grab, and so uh, that costs six, and that, that's all the coins that you had. And then you still have your champion over here, which you're then able to use because it gets readied each, each turn. So if you want to, you can use that. Yeah, and what I, I will generate one combat and uh, tap uh, Eric on the shoulder. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so then you'll uh, decrease to 48. And then again, the, to select multiple, you're hitting the shift key and then dragging across them. And then once you have them, make sure to see the, the deck highlight before you then, perfect, before you then drop them. Otherwise, they get dropped on the table and you're having to clean up anyway. <laughs> so, And okay. that ends my turn. And, and so then you're also then ready your uh, champion again, uh, having used it that turn. And then I redraw five cards. OK. Uh, so here's the question with uh, Tabletopia. Since I've only got two cards in my deck and I now need to draw five, so you can draw two. Uh, so right click and uh, draw two. Then what we're going to do is you're going to click on this so that it's highlighted. I, I'll do it if it's okay. I'll do it just yep. for the first time to show everyone. So you, you, you're going to click on the deck to select it, click and drag, and then the F key flips the deck. So you can flip it back over, drop it on the spot uh, for your, your new deck, and then right click and go and shuffle that deck. So you, yep. you will draw all the cards that are currently available, and then we'll be, be bringing the discard pile, shuffling it, and drawing back up to five. So if you drew two, again, you drew another three to make it a full set of five. OK? Thank you. So uh, red player, not a problem. And that's a, that was a perfect time to be able to show people how to manage uh, the deck building aspect and being able to shuffle their decks uh, within Tabletopia. Uh, so uh, red, your turn, playing mm -hmm. the five cards you drew. Is there a, um, as I see my the bottom of my screen is is the the big uh the big zoom in of all my cards um is there a way to just auto um 
lay down all five if I wanted to. Uh, yes, that. I think it is a, let me quickly try this with drawing a couple cards from here. Uh, I believe it is uh, hitting the shift key and then clicking, uh, actually, no, sorry. I think it is you click on each card that you want. So what actually happens each time you click, those cards are actually, uh, um, they're raised slightly. So mm -hmm. if you move your cursor back off them, you'll see which cards are raised and which cards aren't. Those are the cards that then, if you click and drag them, will drag multiple cards out at the same time. So you can click multiple and then choose which ones are then going to be placed out on the table. Does that make sense? It does. OK, so that's how you do multiple. And, and again, that's just clicking. A single click allows you to then put them high up. If you misclick and you don't want a card, then you can click it again. It'll drop back down. And then you click the ones that are uh, raised and bring them out onto the deck, uh, onto the table. OK. Oh, and yes, you needed to pr uh, prepare that yellow. Great. OK, so I'm just going to quickly those cards that I had uh, and put them back into the deck and give it a quick shuffle again. OK, so while you're deciding, so you have, oh, quite a bit of damage that you're going to be doing this round. I do. I do. And a coin as well as. All right. Uh, I'm a kitty cat. Ah, uh, so you have a champion. So what you can do is you can add the champion out here uh, into this uh, area so that you then remember that it's going to be kept uh, from round to round or from turn to turn. OK, so the, the cat allows you to do one of those three things, and then you mm -hmm. choose when you uh, activate it. Uh, and then what else we have here? Magic Staff. Uh, so if you have two or more action cards in play, you get to draw a card. So uh, one, two, yeah, you, you definitely have two the two here that you're playing. So that would allow you then to draw an additional card if you uh, played it in the order where you had already had these two uh, already played ahead of time. OK. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was the fourth one I laid out, so. Yeah, and, and we're, we're playing a sort of a learning game, so laying them out all out at the beginning and then choosing what order we want to play them is perfectly fine. And actually, oh, okay. in any game, that's you know uh, fine to play that way. But if you're wanting to sort of uh, you can also just play them one at a time, depending on what uh, you're choosing. So, sure. so, so we have I, these two. In play order to do that, I mm -hmm. need to do my uh, sh my little deck shuffle thing. Here. Exactly. Yeah, because you don't have any more. So what you're doing is you're clicking once, and then once it's highlighted, you are then going to click and drag it over to the personal deck side. But before letting it uh, drop down, you can hit the F key to flip it, and then let it drop into that slot. And then it should snap snap there and fit. And because there's a snap, it should, uh, even if you don't drop it perfectly on it, it'll snap into the position. Mm -hmm. Then you right click on it and hit the shuffle button, which is the little, there we go, perfect. Right. OK, and so uh, you have then a total of uh, five damage that you've uh, been able to do, as well as drawing one card. So you want to draw that card first, and then you can direct where you want the damage to. Well, and. The truth about that is because these two cards will have already been played ahead of time, you would have uh, needed to direct those um, beforehand. And so, before I yeah, would need so, to direct because, the damage drawing the card. Yeah, because the Fire Staff card specifically uh, requests that you have two or more action cards already uh -huh. in play. In okay. play is the fact that those cards have already been put down and you know triggered their abilities on them. Okay. Uh, so that would be the four damage from that. And then uh, I'm Pretty sure that I'm correct in the fact that then the fire staff card you could choose to do that in either order. So you could do the the draw and then allocate that damage, or allocate the damage and then the draw. Um, uh, as far as I'm aware, the damage would get added to a pool, and then you can allocate the damage from that pool at any point. At any your point, turn. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, you would allocate it uh, at different. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I've got the f this uh, five here, five damage to deal. Um, mm -hmm. So one um, of that damage has to uh, direct be directed towards the follower uh, right. because it has the guard ability. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the damage could be directed towards your opponent or right. any other champion. If, if the, your opponent had other champions that were non-guards, could be directed towards them as well uh, and, oh. and split up however needed. Okay. So uh, okay, so do you want to uh, you want to allocate the damage uh, first? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, so the one to the, to the follower. So the one to the follower. So the follower then just goes into the discard. It's it gets stunned and so goes into the discard, and then uh, four more damage. Uh, so reducing uh, down by four, and again that's with a yeah. right click and then the plus or minus doing minus four. 
down to 51. Okay, so the, yeah. that's all of those cards. And yeah, if um, you, it's, you can either leave them there or add them yeah. directly to the discard if you want to keep it simple, or simplify things. Uh, again, the uh, shift key allowing you to either uh, do a selection of multiple cards or to click multiple cards. So you can select multiple things at the same time. Sure. And yeah, do I'll not forget it. your cat's ability. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm having some... Uh, okay, uh, I, I, I can sort out the, uh, the, the discard deck while you're choosing what you want to do next. All right. And then, um, yeah, my little kitty cat here lets me do a thing. Um, Man. Uh, I'm going to use my two uh, coins here to buy um, um, a fire gem. Put that here in my discard. And then um, my cat is going to heal me for one. I think it was okay. Good. So I'll add that there. And again, I'm, I'm just helping out so that if you're having if, uh, dish, uh, issues with placing cards, I can just do that as well. Yeah, that's the, for some reason, my well, computer is having a difficulty with that. And it's the fact that you have to wait for that, that highlight to come about before mm -hmm. you can place it. And sometimes, you know, it can, it can be fiddly. Okay, so then you're increasing your, your health by one. And mm -hmm. that would then be uh, you would rotate your card by either hitting the, the hitting the Q Q button on your keyboard once you've reduced your health. I mean, increase your health. Plus one. Plus one. My cat is uh, getting rotated here. So it's the Q Q key. The Q and E are the uh, two different uh, rotations of nine degrees. And. So I just wanted to show you that because actually it will be then the end of your turn, so it will rotate back. But uh, depending on if you use that at the beginning of your turn, you want to make sure that you do that so that you know that you've already used it. Okay. I, I had a little bit of problem with the rotation. As I had well? to click and yeah. drag the card for a second. And then oh. after that, there it will allow it me to rotate it. Ah, okay. There we go. Thank you. All right, and then let me just gather these two, yeah, okay. or if you, can, if you can do that for me. and, and Yeah, I can do that. Card. Go ahead Thank and draw, uh, draw another set of cards, and uh, yellow, it is your turn. Uh, don't forget to reset your champion. Oh, yes, because we just turned it, so it would be then turned back. Yep. Thank you for that. Okay, so I will uh, curse your uh, dying breath and uh, follow up with his buddy, this other champion. How dare you? And then I shall play these two. Okay. And I shall play. Let's have a look what's in here. Okay, so I shall play the prayer beads, uh, generating another two coin, meaning I have okay. four coin. Mm. And then I shall purchase hit job. Okay. And I shall wait for a little longer for it to turn orange. <laughs> it's a little too tricky with tabletopia in there. Yep. I shall play my spiked mace, generating mm. two combat. I will then uh, activate my follower uh, to generate another combat. So that's three combat in total. Mm -hmm. And. Your cat familiar does not have guard, so I am going to deal all three damage directly to you. That's great. No, Eric, sorry. Yeah, so uh, for everyone who's uh, watching, when a champion just has uh, the simple uh, gray shield, it can be the target of damage, but does not have to be. So in this case, uh, all of the damage being targeted towards the opponent's health. And then the champion still sits there, uh, ready to be played in the next turn. So that, that's a choice that uh, the player attacking would be able to have between the two. Okay. And that ends my turn. So I'm now going to put these Ooh. in my... Uh, uh, careful. Uh, before you place that, you accidentally have the uh, cat familiar selected as well. So Hapt. I think that uh, when you were pointing that out, uh, you, it might have been uh, stayed selected. So once you have things selected, you have to then click elsewhere on the table to deselect them. So they re remain selected as long as you... Uh, 
as long as they're highlighted. The easiest way to, to identify that is there's a little uh, yellow uh, glow that appears around things that are selected by that player. So, uh, okay, so then you reset your um, your yep. follower. And uh, Red, this is your turn. All right. Mm hmm let's see. let's see. And uh, just a reminder again, you do have your ability and skill, uh, which you can use at different times. Um, mm -hmm. Not that you need to, just because, uh, especially if it's sort of first time playing, as, and as well for anyone who hasn't played with the character packs before, uh, these are always available and have then uh, additional options for you. All right, I'm going to, um, we're gonna lay this one out here, and then this one out here. Uh, and that's my little discount thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I have essentially three gold right now. Uh, if you if you're purchasing an action card, you do. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Because this so, uh, discount is specific to action cards, which is shown on the top. Uh, I'm just having to do a quick reload here because again, Tabletop is glitching. Okay. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, if you purchase an action card, you you have one more coin than you actually have because you have okay. that discount, right? All right. Or, or you could purchase one higher in value. For that. So uh, this uh, uh, spark card is free. Yes. Essentially. Okay. Uh, if it if it costs one, sorry, I just had to quick, do a quick re reload of my uh, session because it started glitching again. It does, uh, so it? yeah, if it if it's a cost of one, then it would cost zero because it's an action card and you have that discount. All right, I'll do that then. It's going into my discard. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll let you put that in there. Yeah, you can just drop it off to the side. I'll add it there. Okay. And then um, if you could discard my little discount card here. Well, so the discount card also gives you a coin that you'll be able to use. And you can use that coin to purchase something else. Oh, so I you see. still have two uh, two coin worth of uh, you know of money to spend. And a, sm a small point. Um, mm -hmm. Your played cards do not go to discard until end of turn. That's, that's uh, great. Because you do have... Um, symbols and stuff that could yes exactly off. yeah you yeah. might have uh, faction ability ally abilities that happen and, uh, and other things uh, other requirements like uh, the one card we saw where you had to have two action cards played things like that so right. you, uh, additionally also in case you uh, get the chance to reload or redraw a card you you don't get the cards that you played this turn in uh, that draw correct mm -hmm. yeah yeah if you if you do a shuffle yeah yeah um, so I have four here is what you're saying. Uh, yes, four coin. All right. So let's go ahead and buy Rasmus here. Okay. I'll just drop that over here for you. Yep, absolutely. And then I have um, uh, this cultist, which I believe is a... So if it has a little shield on the bottom, then it would be a champion. That's the easiest way to identify them. Right. Uh, yes, and so this is a guard champion. Yeah, this is the one that you purchased uh, in the first turn, I think. Mm -hmm. So this is a, guard, a champion with a guard value of three, so uh, your opponent would then need to do three damage to defeat it before being able to allocate damage to either your cat or yourself. Okay. And the mm -hmm. um, what is the, the, the black, the arrow uh, pointing to the left? Maybe. So that's uh, just uh, indicating that these are used. They, these are uh, used and then uh, prepared. So that's ah. the turning to the side when you use it, and then uh, pre uh, preparing it again after at the end of the turn. Okay. And that's the case as well with the uh, the skill that you have down here. So they all have that little black arrow indicating that they're they're a one time use each turn, but are, sure. are readied for the next turn. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. I can use this one now to mm -hmm. uh, get two damage to my pool. That's correct. Um, which I can use one to damage this follower and then okay. allocate the other to um, hero. Okay, so uh, one damage to the, the hero, to the your opponent. Okay, and so then, then uh, I can re ready my. Well, so uh, now if uh, you would re ready at the end of your turn, but right. uh, you, you can still use your uh, cat, uh, your. Other champion, ah, your cat yeah. familiar. So if, if you want to use it for one of the three things it can do. 
like a cat. He's very, uh, he hides sometimes. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Did, what came out here? Was it $1, perhaps? It was not $1. Um, I'm you, going... you, you took the one, uh, the, the one coin uh, action yeah. with your discount. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to... Let's, 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 let's... Uh... Hit me for another point. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna heal for a point. I think. Uh, okay. 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 So I need to draw later. Okay. So it, you would, we would then be rotating that cat, but since it's the end of your turn, and I don't think you can do anything else, we can then just get these both readied. I will then uh, pick up the cards for you and put them in your discard. Thank and you. uh, yellow, I believe it's your turn. Thank you. Okay. So. Uh, I am. How in Tabletopia would I look at my discard pile? Uh, so I don't believe, and that that is one of the limitations. I don't believe that there is actually a way to look through any uh, deck. I I looked at that when I was first loading up the game, and I don't think there is one. I mean, you could like just flip it over and actually look at the cards manually. Yeah, it's shuffled before you. Put it in, I mean, it's not ideal, but I think that would be a workaround. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of this deal, rotate. Can you? Uh, yeah, can you we can do. There we go. Your hand? So, what I just did is I right clicked and used the take ability, and I took all seven of the cards. And then, when you take multiple things, it lays it out on this little grid. So, then you can have a look at what's in your discard, and then you can go and hit shift oh, nice. and drag across it again, and then mm. add it back to, to a single deck again. Okay. So we we figured a workaround. It's not ideal, but uh, we work with what we have. <laughs> so the the, uh, the reason for that is because I'm playing my smash and grab, which okay. allows me to put a card from my discard pile on top of my deck. Okay. So, so this is your discard over here. So yep. you can take one of those cards and then you put it right here. So I shall take my lovely blue card that I purchased last time. And then and if you hit, there we go. Um, and so then what, yeah, then we're we... going to shift click over those and drag drop them onto. So right what you'll actually need to do is uh, select uh, uh, all but one of them and then uh, drop them onto that one card. And so I can quickly do that for you while you're doing the rest of your turn. Okay, okay. So what I'm doing for everyone that's watching, I'm selecting all the other cards, waiting for the card that I'm placing them on to highlight, and then letting them go, and then they all become a new a new deck for me to be able to manage separately. Okay, so you place an after full coin that you have. Okay, and let's have a look at these. What do we have? We have an orc. So I shall purchase the orc. Okay, for a cost of two. And then, yep, exactly, you get to draw a card straight away. So if that card was also with, within your price range, you could then purchase it. Uh, da, 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 da. And then I shall use my last of my two to grab a fire jump. Okay. And then to remind you, also, you played uh, Smash and Grab, which uh, allows you to gener uh, generate uh, six uh, damage. Ooh. So three will be targeted against the Death Cultist. Since that has guard, it has to be taken. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you can do then, uh, red player, you would be then picking that up and then putting it in your discard since it was stunned and taken up. Okay. I will and then use two of the other three that's left over against the cat. Okay, so again, that going into your discard. And then and that one leaves leftover. one left over to uh, tickle the wizard with. <laughs> <laughs> so your wizard goes down to 46. And that ends my turn, so I now highlight these ones and put them to my discard. Perfect. Draw okay. Two. And so, uh, Red, it's your turn to play. So uh, you could have drawn the cards at the end of the, your last turn once you had done all of the discards and cleanup. Uh, you sure. can then draw back up to five. But so if you don't have uh, five cards in the deck here, you draw as many as you can from there, and then we'll then shuffle up your discard and then uh, have that ready to draw the rest, the remainder of cards. 
So okay. for some reason, I have I don't have the draw oh, ability. So it seems like it's it's just a single card, so it doesn't quite work uh, the same way as the deck. Okay. So just click and drag it to the bottom of your screen, and that'll add it into your hand. So you'll have that one card in your hand, and then I'll mm -hmm. quickly do this for you here, where we flip this over, we place this here, and we do the shuffle, and then you can right-click on here and draw another four cards into your hand. Okay. Um, And having played a couple of deck builders on both Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia, you start getting used to the rhythm of, of having to do that shuffle. So that's why I'm yeah. happy to do myself uh, or do that for you to, to help out. Um, also, the reason why I uh, sleeve all, all of my deck building games is so that you can quickly shuffle them. All right. So let's get this uh, ch champion back out here. Okay. Whoop, put him a little bit too high. Are you good okay. Him for me. And so for everyone who's watching, uh, the Death Cultists came back out on the next turn because it was shuffled into the discard pile. And so uh, just by the, the, luck, the luck of the shuffle, uh, came into the hand that was drawn. Now, so that, that is actually, and that, that is one of the importances of actually drawing uh, cards during at the end of your turn so i said because i'm pretty sure that the that it would have needed to be that way and that's why you wouldn't have been able to get that card but that's okay again a learning game that we're playing but so the draw phase actually happens still on the turn of the player who's just finishing up their turn uh, uh, so you, the, the cultists would have gone into an empty discard pile both the cultists and the familiar when they were uh, taken out oh, by yeah. okay so apologies yellow that we didn't do it in, in that uh, order okay. but uh, um, a good learning learning point <laughs> it shouldn't be too i can we can do i'm, I mean, I'm happy to go forward because uh, it's as i say it's a learning game okay. uh i have played hero realms before so uh, i'm a little bit ahead of the curve here yeah, yeah. no and you you've been uh, been a, a good commentary and correcting me on some of the things that i've slipped up on either not explaining properly or or, or missing so thank you <laughs> okay All okay. Right. So unfortunately, in the cards that you played, you don't have another blue card played. Yeah, so that's no, no synergy. Unless there was, uh, well, so uh, except that, no. So you, do you have another uh, action card? I do no. not. It's all items. Okay. Yep. So ne neither the Firestar second ability or this one would be able to uh, be triggered. So because what could have happened is if the if you had two action cards in play you would then get to draw a card, and maybe that drawn card would get uh, to be one of the blue cards that combo. So, And that's kind of the strategy with the game, is getting those combos to really trigger as often as, as you can. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. So uh, you've got some choices. Yeah, I've got six here. Um, hmm. But you know it would be cool. You know what, let's just let's, let's, let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to buy the street thug here. Sorry for everyone on the stream when I'm having to reload. I'm not sure quite what's happening with Tabletopia and why it's glitching every so often. But uh, get back to it shortly. And that then, leaves you with one. So would you like to drag one from the trade deck into the gap? Yeah, you refill automatically so that you have uh, five more cards to choose from. Uh, and that is one so now you still have one purchase coin so you could take that one as well yeah so i think i have well what did i so you you purchase something for three right and you still have so you had six right yeah i had six i think i have three six left. where's, uh, yeah, where's so, the three six so there's the, the fire fire gem and the one here and then there's actually three on bribe over here yep my, my mistake. That's I not a problem. You didn't need to. That's okay. No worries. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. 
Yeah, an interesting choice you have here is there's not been many green cards, so it doesn't quite combo as well. The auto yeah, here. it's not my favorite. But, um, yeah, it just depends on what you think. Yeah, means. I'll go ahead and uh, grab this orc, I think, with my okay. remaining three. Let's go in immediately into discard. Well, uh, I can add that's the idea. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. no uh, and then I, I have um, one damage, but don't think... Oh, but you don't have any... Um, Guards out, no, so that right now. goes directly to you then. And actually, uh, you haven't used your Death Cultist this turn, so you could also oh. use that. I he was up there. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, another yeah. two, so the three then. Yep, so rotate him. Yeah, to indicate that he's been used. There we go. Uh, so that is uh, three damage, three one damage. from the Fire Staff and two from the Death Cultist coming at me. And um, so, yeah, and so the the damage on the fire gem would be if you chose to sacrifice that. So that's one way of getting the fire gems have the ability where they can give you money when you're needing that. But later on in the game, you might not need as much money, and instead of wanting to do, do as much damage as possible, so right. the little trash can symbol allows you to sacrifice it into the sacrifice pile. So it comes out of your deck, but it gives you the three damage. Mm -hmm. uh, but at this time, I, I'm assuming you had chosen not to do so, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So it's just, will it's just reduce my health by three. Puts me on to okay. 47. Okay. And I believe that is uh, everything for your turn, correct? It, it is. Okay, so I'll add these back into a discard, and if you want to rotate your death cultures back. And now we'll do this correctly this time. So once we're, uh, now <laughs> we'll also do the draw phase of your turn, which is where you'll be drawing five cards before the next player then plays. Okay. Let's see. And so that's how you wouldn't have been able to get those cards that were removed during the opponent's turn into your hand straight away. Right. That's okay. Uh, unfortunately, you are not going to like me on this turn. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone's got a, a, a comboing turn or yeah, something it's gonna, powerful. It's, not, <laughs> it's about to happen. There we go. Okay, so uh, how you you have drawn? That is good. Okay, so I shall first off, I'll start by playing my follower. Okay. I will then play a fire gem and my gold to generate three coin. Now, I can't afford uh, Arcus, um, so I shall take taxation for one. Okay. And that brings out Cracker High Priest, which is six, which is too expensive for my cat tastes. <laughs> an expensive, it's actually quite an expensive market right now, Yeah, we've had a very, <laughs> very expensive uh, market at the beginning, and, and it's come oh. back. So That's I'm going to take a fire gem yeah, yeah. to uh, bolster my uh, purchase ability later. <laughs> exactly. So what I shall do now is play my hit job, which generates okay. seven combat. Ooh. Ooh, I will good. then play my smash and grab, and I shall look at my deck, uh, which is... So it's the right click, and then yep. uh, hit uh, take, which is the little hand symbol. And then you can do the two, and it'll bring them back up. Oh, with two, it's not as... It, it would have yeah. been just as easy to pull them out, but with multiple, that's how you'd go about doing it. Yeah. And I, I shall use the Smash and Grab's ability to put taxation to the top of my deck, though I need to make sure I click it correctly first. There you go. And then put that back to discard. Um, now, because I have played my second uh, blue card... Um, yes. The second uh, ability here triggers or allows me to trigger it. So I can yes. now stun your champion, which basically is in, deals enough damage to it to remove it from play. Mm -hmm. So uh, so Red, you'll then be... Uh, this champion, unfortunately, oh, go ahead, is uh, returned to your discard uh, because it got stunned. And so uh, because of the faction ability that uh, paired up between the two blue cards. And I can... Help you there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it worked. <laughs> worked this time. So, I okay. will then, I will then activate my uh, follower for another point of damage. I will then trash uh, my fire gem, and mm -hmm. so uh, to the sacrifice pile over here. Oh no, no, fire gems go there. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Uh, so that gives me another three. So that's uh, seven. 13, 
14, Ooh. 17 points of damage hitting the wizard. Okay, so that'll put you to... I, I wholly smite you. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to go minus 12 is the most I can do at one time. And then we're going to do another minus 5. Okay. All right. Hmm. And that ends my turn. So I highlight my cards, put them to discard. I then ready my champion. Okay, and red, you can start your turn. Right. Let's see. Draw five. The cat out here. Okay. Um. What are the chances? What are the chances? Let's just, uh, hmm. Oops. Uh, no, okay. That's normal. That's out. That's out. That's out. That's out. Nope, it's not out. And so to select multiple, if you wanted to play multiple down onto the table, you mm -hmm. can cl you click each one uh, independently, and then they will be raised slightly within your hand, and then you can click and drag, and it'll drag all of the ones that are raised, that are currently raised. Okay. So that's, that's how you can use that on Tabletopia. Okay, so you have the your two coins over here. Plus another. So this is another champion. So this we would play out uh, here, ready to be used. And this is to everyone's, you know, individual preference. But uh, keeping your champions sort of separated from your regular cards, so you don't accidentally discard them at the end of your turn. Yeah, thank you. I was definitely going to. <laughs> yes, because the, the way you played it there I was just wanting to clarify that that is a champion. So this is R Rasmus, which you purchased earlier giving you two coin, and then currently not giving you the second ability because you don't have another blue card. Don't, unfortunately. But on a future turn, you might, if, if he's able to uh, last, uh, hang around until then. Expensive. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, everything is right now. Nothing is four or five, so I can't even buy it with my cat. So let's. Uh, I'm just gonna, if I survive, it might matter, but um, I'm gonna buy two fire be be Before you do, um, basically, you've got two coins uh, that you've two gold that you've played. So that's two coins total so far. Right. If you activate your Rasmus, that will add another two, making that four. Right. And then if you activate your cat, you can then add another one, making you have five gold total. But the, unfortunately, right now, the market row yeah. uh, is six or higher, is what uh, the, the yes. red was pointing out. So, yes, you know, but you are right in pointing that the different uh, sources that you can get uh, coins from. So whenever you're planning that out in your turn, it's good to really sort of review all the different ways you could get money and what the total, uh, you know, might be for that. Uh, right. So that was good to point that out. Woof. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I bought those two, so that's all my money. Yeah, so that's um, four, and unfortunately, you just have one left over. Well, actually, you could choose instead not to use this for the one coin. Right. Uh, but that's I'm going to use it for one health. Okay. Uh, so then I'm going to flip buddy there. This I used for a coin, I believe. Uh, for both, yeah, for the two coin, because mm -hmm. okay. it uh, added up so, to total four. What is the cat being generated for? Uh, for um, one health. For, so for one, health. Okay. one health. Yeah. Yep. Um, because and then, it was a total of four for the two fire gems, so the uh, the fifth coin from here wasn't needed, and so instead it was used as health. And then I have so, two damage? Is that what that says? Yeah. Uh, yes, and that would be two damage. Yeah. Uh, so one to the guard and uh, one to the hero. Okay. And then and that puts me to 46. Okay, so we select all of those cards. and yeah, then Right where I want you. 
and then uh, we can rotate to to okay and that and then now I can draw yeah and you can draw five okay so it is a uh, yellow's turn okay bear with me one second Not a problem. So I'm looking at my resurrectability, uh, just so. Um, but that requires me to trash that um, or sacrifice it, whichever term is appropriate. I uh, put a champion from my discard into play, and I can only do that on champion that was done since last turn. I don't really want to be using that on my cleric. <laughs> yeah, on your um, So, yes. Um, let's play some cards instead. Uh, so I will play so that generates me two, three, four and six. So I shall purchase Cracker High Priest for six coin okay. and then I shall play my intimidation, and I shall intimidate Rasmus uh, into going away. Uh, before you do that, I should um, redo my my deck, correct? Uh, no. So because you were you were able to draw five cards from this deck over here, right? I, I was. Yeah, that yes, was my yeah. last five. So since you've already drawn all five for your next turn, you're fine there. Uh, any discards would go into uh, here. You would okay. only need to shuffle this when you're needing to draw a new card. I see. Okay. So you always go through whatever's here, and then the, the shuffle happens when you're needing to draw again. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong there, Felix. I'm pretty sure that's... That, that is correct. That's, that's correct. Uh, yeah, okay. good note. Yeah, but I, yeah. Okay. yeah, that's right. Okay. So the, uh, I, I don't have to deal damage to Rasmus or no. your cat, but I am choosing to uh, five, direct or intimidate... Uh, Rasmus into running to your discard pile. Sure. Okay. Given the price of You're the not going to hurt the cat, though, are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. Safe. I like uh, that the cat's not a guard, so it's always a choice if you want to hurt the cat. <laughs> yeah. Every, every time I've just put gentle, like, little treats inside its catnip and it's passed out and gone to discard. It's not yeah, come yeah. hurt, it's just it's fun. passed it's out in bliss. It's enjoying the warm sun. And uh, there are no combos, so that ends my turn. So I shall move all of these to my discard. Okay. And I shall draw five. Okay, so it is uh, your turn, Red Player. Ooh, okay, right. Uh... And, and so this is the case where uh, what uh, the L player was pointing out was the fact that uh, your discards uh, will be shuffled and used again, but anything you play right now won't go directly into your discard. Only uh, purchase will then go in there. Okay, okay. But if you have something that lets you to draw a card, that'll then have you shuffle that deck during your turn. Otherwise, it'll just shuffle at the end of the turn when you need to draw another five cards to start. Uh, sure. Prepared for the next, next turn. Um. Okay, so the next action I require, I require to cost one less. So this is worth a coin and... Uh, it's kind of one on actions. Uh, so this intimidation I can buy. Mm -hmm. With just that card, yes. With just that card, so that goes into discard. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you pop it in there, mine's okay. yeah, sure. temperamental here. <laughs> That's okay. And we so, get another card coming out. Sorry? What's the new one? Ah, close ranks. Uh, hmm, interesting, interesting. Let's, um, you know what, let's do a... Uh, 
the wizard uh, uh, ability I have to pay two to do and That's a health. Uh, so, uh, two and a health, exactly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. To, yeah, to be so, able to get that extra card coming out. Yeah, normally it's not two in health for the different abilities, but that one, as part of the use of the ability, it, it hurts you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Requires your uh, intense focus. All right, so I'm just uh, playing these over here to the side so that I can keep straight. Okay. Okay, so w w when you choose what order you want to do things, we'll then cover it. So Spark uh, then has an effect that affects the uh, opponent, where it'll then have the opponent discard one of their cards from their hand. And again, that's why having drawn five cards at the end of the last turn, so that the opponent already has five cards to then discard from. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we can go step through step, uh, step by step through what you're wanting to do in your turn right now. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like I have... Oh, I do have my cat, though. Mm -hmm. So you could generate uh, three if you needed to. Three. Yeah, let me let me do that. Cat to buy this close ranks. Close ranks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll add close ranks to your discard. Thank you. You can rotate that, and so we've used the two coins. Thank you. And then I have oh, this, you, yellow. this damage here. Yeah, so you have two plus another three. Unfortunately, you don't have any other green comboing with that. So it's Unfortunately. Five damage. So yeah, five so damage. I have to discard a and card. And you discard a card. Mm -hmm. And you're generating how much damage? Uh, five, uh, damage. five. Five damage. Two from okay. this and three from that. Two from the Ignite and three from Spark. That puts <laughs> me to 41. That's fun. Is uh, Ignite and Spark. So you Ignite and then... <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Cool card. Right, and then I believe that is all for me. I believe so. So then we reset that. I will select all the cards for you. We can get the discard. Okay. And uh, and yellow, you took off the damage, right? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And then now, so, I'm now you. So yeah, now you'd be uh, now you'd be shuffling this, getting ready for uh, the, at the end of your turn to get five more cards. So hitting F. Yeah, there we go. Placing it just on top of that spot. It doesn't have to be exact. No. And then, uh, so first shuffling, so right click and hit the shuffle button, and then uh, drawing five. <coughs> All right. Okay. okay, ready to go. And it's Yellow's turn. So Yellow starts this turn instead with four cards because of that spark ability having forced a discard. So I shall play my lovely follower. <laughs> Reliable follower. Well, you, I think you uh, have two of them, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I shall play Spiked Mace. And I shall, let's see. I shall play that for, and that, both for coins, giving me three coins. So okay. I shall then purchase Wolf Shaman for two. Okay. And see if we get a, a one cost card. And unfortunately, not. I'm not lucky. Uh, I shall then activate a, my priest for one da extra damage. And so there are three damage coming. Uh, Bear with me one second. Uh, two will make the cat go to sleep for a little while. Okay. So we'll have the cat go to the discard. And then that leaves one point to come to you. Okay, so dropping you down to 29 again. Okay. So bear with me one second. Oh, yeah, you'd accidentally selected the... Yeah, you don't want to be putting that into your discard. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So, uh, and then also ready, readying your, um, yeah. your champion. You took the one card that was here and then shuffling to get another four cards. So, uh, again, clicking once. Once it's highlighted, then it can be picked up uh, and hit the F key. So it's a single click. 
Yeah, that is uh, yeah. single clicking, but uh, uh, yeah. there we go. Well, so because, and this is the, the frustration playing between sort of tabletop simulator and this is that in tabletop simulated, it's more intuitive where you can click and drag and it'll drag the entire deck uh, if you click and hold for a little while. Here instead, you have to click release and then click and hold again. So, ah, so it, it's a two yeah, state section. Yeah, okay. it's good to be able to pick up a deck, it's a single click and then release and then a click and drag. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, Red, I believe it's your turn. The other's already drawn. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay. Why yeah, my card management is probably the trickiest thing on Tabletopia to kind of get used to, but once you get so, sort of the rhythm of it, it's, it's easier to deal with. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. That one's raised. And then this one is. So raised. And then I can shift click those over here. All right. So these. Um, okay. Synergize. Yeah. So both of their abilities at the bottom will be played. This is a champion. So you can place the Rasmus out here uh, ready to be used multiple times. Okay. I'm actually just going to. This shouldn't matter, the order that I... Yeah, and, and as I was saying, since we're doing a learning game, you know, we can then determine what order, you know, works best for you uh, once you have the cards played down. Yeah. Having them in your hand it keeps the tension of, like, okay, what what is he going to do next? You know, what's yeah. the card that you get to do? But while learning, it's easier this way. Um, all right. So I have two... Four, six, seven, I believe. Mm -hmm. You have seven points. Plus the ability to... To put the next card you acquire on top of your deck, which means that it'll get drawn into your hand uh, straight away on your next turn. Or yeah. at the beginning, of the, at the end of this turn. Or even, if, if you had an ability that got you to draw in another card, you could even have it available to you on this turn. Mm -hmm. So Two, four, five... So seven. Mm -hmm. So, can we um, get the master assassin? There's the wolf form. The other ones are all eight. eight. This is crazy. Yeah. This, this, the this is a, a wild market. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do I want this wolf? Uh, does eight point two six cards? Card is not bad. I also would have some money left over potentially. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get another blue anytime soon anyway. So let's um let's grab this wolf form here, I believe. Okay. That's gonna go into on the top of the deck, right? Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. So I can just drop it. Uh so here we go. That. Thank you. Okay. And then we're drawing another card. That cost five, I believe, right? So you have two left over. And I'm uh to do that, you would have uh, also have, well, so the the five, I guess, is from these here, and then when you ac activate right. Christmas, you would have another two. So right now, the two could only really go for getting another fire gem if you wanted that. Yeah. Unless... Hmm. No, it's not worth it. I'll just buy a... No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Well, so if you're worried about getting fire gems that are going to clog your deck, you have one right now that you could just uh, sacrifice so that you basically kind of like... Uh, oh, one for out, one. But, you know, yeah, it did. It, I mean, yeah, one for one. But if... Or you could sacrifice it and not get a fire gem and then you're getting rid of those, you know, and, and yeah. get them out. But it depends on what your strategy is. I'm just letting you know what's... Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's going to be a while since I, until I reshuffle anyway. Um, yeah, let me do that. Let me trash the the fire gem that I have here. Uh, where okay. does that go? Uh, that goes back so into the... Gonna, yeah, it goes into the, the, the deck over here of fire gems. And so, well, we'll put it over here just to remind us that we have that uh, damage to them be uh, dealt. Sure. Three, and then we'll put it... Uh, so I have... And then I'll just... Yeah, I'll grab it at the end of the, at the turn. Um, so that's five damage that I have now. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, one to the 
follower. So it would be uh, it would be five plus two, and then another three because you're sacrificing this. Yep, five, okay. seven, uh, so ten. ten in total. So one to my follower. That leaves me to take nine, uh, which you don't have to deal nine to me, but <laughs> it's obvious. Uh, okay, five, yeah. seven. Any coin or damage that you don't use at the end of the turn is then just discard. Is just sort of lost. Uh, but it, it, you are, as as you were saying, you always uh, ch can choose whether or not to use all of your coin and to use all of, your, all of your damage. Sometimes you might not be able to use your damage because of a guard uh, requiring more damage than you're able to actually deal, uh, sure. and therefore protecting the, the your opponent from that damage. So where did let's see? Uh, I have I have five coming from the intimidation, and then two from the ignite. That's seven. And then if you chose, if you were choosing uh, okay. to sacrifice, it would give you another three here from the fire gem. Okay, yeah. So the act so of sacrificing it, you get that. That's why so it's a fire nine gem. to the hero. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. And then that should be everything, I think. So okay. you were dealing me nine damage, yes? I am dealing you nine damage, correct. Okay. Okay. So the, that fire gem is then sa uh, sacrificed. And then that I puts bought me to 32. one. As well. Oh, and you then you wanted to use two coin to then purchase the last two Perfect. coin to purchase one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you'll need to activate your. Uh, you to tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then is that I believe is all of your that, actions. That that should be everything. Yes. Okay. The the reason I always uh, say that or ask that is because uh, everyone still has this uh, their ability card they can use at any point. Which right. just requires it being uh, sacrificed, and then that two uh, two coin instead of purchasing the fire gem could have been used towards your channel, mm -hmm. your channel right. skill. Sorry. If uh, you had if you had channeled, then you would have drawn that card that you put to the top of your deck, thus right. allowing you to pull that other one out. So while you were earlier saying, oh, "I don't think I'm going to get another blue so quickly," you would have put that blue to the top of your deck. And then you could use the wizard's ability to pull that to your hand uh -huh. this turn, and thus created an even bigger combo and dealt <laughs> me even more damage. Yeah, and th and that's why both hero realms and star realms are the games that keep on giving because there's always, always those opportunities to find really cool mechanical ways, uh, mechanics to to combo and, and create, mm -hmm. you know, powerful turns. Okay, All so. Right. You clean up there for me, please. Yeah, I will do. If you want to rotate your champion, reset, uh, ready your champion again, uh, Rasmus, and then uh, Yellow, your turn. So, um, I shall place Intimidation and Hit Job. Hit Job. Okay, this combo. ally ability start stuns Rasmus. Okay, so Rasmus unfortunately goes to the discard because of that stun ability. And the ally ability of intimidation gives me two Goodness points. Christ. And so the the the, the uh, rake, uh, what is rake master assassin with its ability to stun a uh, target uh, champion each turn is why it costs as much as it does. Right. I then play uh, my three gold, uh, so that gives me five gold in total. Which is not enough to buy anything <laughs> from the trade pile. The, these eights that have been stuck over here have. I, I, well, oh, also I, I think both of, both of you have been getting quite a lot of uh, offensive, you know, abilities, and have been less less inclined to trying to develop that buying power. So. So I have five in total. So I shall buy two fire gems. Okay. And I'll just help you out here. The, so that they can get snapped in. Go ahead. And then that is 12 points of damage oh. coming at you. OK. And then the one coin left over is just lost, Yeah, unfortunately. OK. So then you can uh, draw your five cards. And it's your turn, right? It is. Um, <laughs> hmm. uh, we're 
we're gonna mm. Oh, shift, shift to drag. Well, and what if you've uh, clicked on the cards and they're all raised up? You just need to click one of those cards, and you can actually pull all of them out, all the all ones right. you've raised up. So. All right, so uh, target opponent discards a card first. OK, so uh, yellow, you unfortunately will be discarding another card. OK. I shall discard a gold. I don't have any money here. Got two dollars, three dollars. Uh, and lucky for me, I removed your Rasmus, otherwise yes. you would have been doing <laughs> more damage. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I was uh, upset. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. he took he took the hit for you because I, if I believe, uh, yeah, Rasmus doesn't require isn't a guard, so it doesn't yeah. require being targeted. But right. it was probably a safe a safe choice by Yella. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I, I let's see what order do I want to do this in? So I'm going to use the three gold first. Um, Everything is still uh, high. High cost is three eight and two seven plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this this sounds counterintuitive, but I may I suggest activating your wizard ability and seeing what you get on the top of your deck. Yeah, yeah. I consider it pretty low here. Um, yeah, I mean a fire gem isn't incredibly useful to me right now. Um, yeah, why why not? Just for just for for giggles. Uh, all right, so then that's uh, two that I need to spend. Mm -hmm. Two of the three are spent on that, and then you would decrease your health by one, and uh, we would then rotate this card to indicate it's been used this turn. Whoops. Okay. So, I... yeah. No, you're right. You're at sixty. That's right. You and then you draw one 60. card, and then you get to draw one to see what you get. But I can just flip it here. Yeah. Okay. So. So now that means that you have one extra coin and actions cost one less. Unfortunately, which means the fire bomb is now worth the cost seven. For you. Well, unfortunately, not much more. <laughs> but you do uh, have enough if you want now to buy a fire gem as well as what yeah. You did. But, um, yeah, yeah. It, so, it, it, it was worth. I mean, it yeah, depends on the thing, but it's worth worth trying it out. And it's later in the game where you wanted to try get as far ahead as you can. Yeah. So even though I have um, uh, used this, well, let's see, let's see. Let me. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, scrap this fire gem. Even though I've used it for the two gold, I can then scrap it. Yes, uh, yeah. you can use the abilities at different times. So when you okay. play, the, the idea is when you play the card, then you use that top ability, and then the bottom half you can use uh, whenever you know you you wish. Sure. Each each unique ability is segmented with a line. So it's mm -hmm. some like really fancy cards may have three. Mm -hmm. um, so like then they happen at different points, etc. Uh, okay. So. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's not, as long as there is a line between them, you can use them at, uh, in any order that you wish. As long as they're not activated, triggered like ally abilities, etc. Okay. Um, all right. What's the, the easiest way to do this? Okay, so I'm I'm going to buy another. I should have two gold here. Uh, yes, gonna, you have one gold from the the card you just drew. I'm going to replace that fire gem that I'm going to scrap. Seven. Mm -hmm. If you could do that for yeah. me, pop that into my discard. Using up the rest of your money to buy another fire gem. Yep. And, now and then got... scrapping that one yeah. for so... three. Okay, so and we'll then just... so five. Three. So 
eight for closed ranks, and then another eight for the wolf form. So so it would be three plus five uh, plus two, so a total of ten plus eight. Because we have the three from here, five, Uh, two from your ignite, and then eight. So so eighteen. Eighteen. Eighteen, yes, because I forgot I forgot yeah, the yeah, two yeah. from Ignite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The two so from did Ignite. I, so that's okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. we'll throw it so. into the Discord. So that's a, a total of 18 coming your way. That puts me on to 14 health. Okay. This is down to the wire. Okay. So uh, then, unfortunately, this didn't have the comboing ability, and I don't think... So the yeah. only other have if you want to would be sacrificing the uh, wolf form to have your opponent discard another card uh, but that again is a choice just like the fire gem yeah let's see what, what my deck is at 10 that's two rounds uh is it gonna last that long is it going to last that long um okay mm. No, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So I'll go and pick up all the cards in the discard. Uh, go ahead and draw another five for yourself. And then we get to ready this uh, uh, your skill back. Okay, so draw five. And then yellow, it'll be your turn. Okie dokie. Uh, so um, I am um, with four cards because you made me discard. <laughs> Boo-hoo. The pesky discarding. Yeah. Yeah. So I shall start off by playing my follower. <laughs> that's a, that's a, the starting move for most of your turns. Yeah, yep. that follower. Uh, is not- <laughs> it keeps going I out. have... Uh, my uh, cleric has two of them in my deck. Yeah, in the starting deck, right. Ah, in the starting okay. team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I took a drink break. Uh, so I have two coins and I have my follower. I shall play my spiked mace for another two combat. Um, I shall then uh, activate um, my ability here. So, um, bless ability. so my bless. So I shall gain three. Mm. Uh, t- uh, I'm specifying the target player as me. If you hadn't <laughs> If you hadn't dealt me the damage, I was going to be nice uh, as a learning <laughs> thing to uh, target you. But for um, 18 damage the last turn, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I'm definitely going to take the three to myself. So uh, plus three yep. put and me then, to 17. And then the um, second half of that is where you're going to be able to have a plus one to, uh, to your champions. Yeah, so for the next round until the... Uh, End so of my next, next turn. turn, my follower here has guard two. Um, I then will play my useless coin. Um, it doesn't <laughs> really have much use right now. Yep. And then I shall deal, uh, I shall activate my follower um, and then deal three damage to mm-hmm. you. And just for everyone who's following along, to be able to use Bless, uh, it cost also two to activate it. And so that's where the two was used from taxation to pay for that. Hmm. And that ends my turn. So I shall move these cards to my discard. I shall ready... Ready, bless. And ready this one. Okay, and draw your five, and red, it'll be your turn. Yeah. It will be indeed. Um, and once. so again, drawing two from here, and then uh, shuffling and resetting. I've already drawn my five, so... Oh, you already drew your five. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I didn't catch the fact that it already had gone through. All right, no let's live dangerously here. Um, <laughs> Gotta go for it. It's, it's, it's end time soon. It is, yeah. Uh, 
All right, so I'm going to play this here, the Fire Gem. That gives me two that I need to use my Wizard ability. Um, okay. So I'm going to... Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, minus one to 12. 12. Okay, and you've paid two, so this can be activated and turned to the side. So Thank you get to you. draw a card. Yeah. Back up to five. Unfortunate. Okay. All right. <laughs> Didn't turn out the way you wanted. It did not. It's all about that risk and reward. It is. Well, and this is also where, if you have the opportunity to start sort of thinning through your deck, you can make sure that that there's a higher probability of you getting those really good cards. Right. That, that, that strategy isn't always it doesn't always work and it also depends on what you're able to pick up uh, that can help you do that yeah so. don't forget to, uh, of your uh, fireball um, which will basically do a big fireball of damage towards me and everything else and all the champions <laughs> yeah four so that would stun my champion and me but additionally, because it is directed damage, as in it's saying deal damage to X and Y, uh, it means that uh, even if I had guards that were greater than four, um, I personally, my character would still take damage as well. Uh, yeah, and that's what it's saying down there in the little parentheses where it says guards do not protect against this type of damage because yeah. it's directed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you're doing a great job of uh, the explanation. Yes, I appreciate it. That's some cool strategies, tips. Okay. It's, it's not a fun game unless everybody can uh, enjoy yeah. themselves. Absolutely. No, and what's great about this is it's uh, you know quite a, a compact game. You can throw down and explain to people relatively quickly uh, and get playing. You know, it doesn't take too much to get set up. Okay, so I see you have two uh, two champions here, which you then can. Uh, ah, those are champions. Thank yeah, you. so again with the little uh, the shield uh, down in the bottom corner. Oftentimes they also have the activated ability, which has a little uh, black arrow, and then up in the top text area it tells you there that it's a champion. But uh, most of the time, I find it the easiest is just to ch check to see if it has a little shield symbol. That'll right. then remind you that it's in a champion that you can place up. Okay. Um, okay, so I have either five or six dollars, depending on how I use. Right. And you have the ability to have that uh, card if it's an action that you purchase to be put on top of the deck. But right uh, now, I don't have another blue out. Do right? because of the uh, champion that you played. The the ah. street tag is blue, and so that would count as an ally uh, to that card to the same faction. And that's one of the powerful things with champions that have uh, faction colors is they are they stay there, laid out and ready to be uh, combined with other cards as long as they survive the next turn uh, to come back and be able to play right. with similar colors. Yeah, I, don't I, have I hope money, that though. one of the you didn't get a gold in your last draw, um, and that you got the bribe or one of the other nice cards. Um, I I did get a gold in my last draw, but <laughs> so because uh, if you had played in the other order, your right. combo would have uh, come off, and then you might have been able to purchase a card, which would have then gone to your top of your deck, and then your wizard ability could have been used to draw that card that you just put to the top of the deck. Well, but wouldn't wouldn't have any more coin to be able to. No, but I mean, like if if it had played in a different order. Yeah, uh, yeah. So saying that you'd have two, three, four, plus uh, three, so a total of seven, so being able to purchase one of the seven cost cards. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to we don't have enough money to buy anything. Uh, I am going to uh, – I'll spend two of my dollars to buy another fire gem. Uh Actually, I won't be. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I'll buy one more fire gem. Um, and then I will scrap this one. 
that I spent earlier to yep. use my wizard ability. So I can just put that, uh, you're purchasing one and, and scrapping another, so I'm yeah. just putting disco. So that's three. So, well, I'll do it to, so everyone who's following, one's getting removed, then the other one's being purchased. Just so it yeah. doesn't seem like you're discarding it. It's not, it's not the same. It is actually different, just so everyone knows that. Don't want to confuse. So uh, that'll give me three damage plus the two for my orc grunt, and then I'll use my street thug for two more. So that's seven mm -hmm. damage. May I recommend your firebomb? Uh. And, and the reason why I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Yellow, pointing out the firebomb is the fact that right now this guard is a, a two, two protection, and the firebomb being able to remove it and cause damage while then also leaving that full seven damage to go directly towards your opponent. Because that the, is correct. We've done that to get rid of the champion as well as cause the, the four damage. And sure. then full seven goes through versus just using the seven where you would then do two damage would need to be going to the guard and then the five going to the opponent. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, just, it's a case of timing and if you wanted to do that, but that's... Yeah, my only concern is that I know you have some other champions. <laughs> that might come up, yeah. Uh, it, it is, but at, at this point, like I, I'm on 17 and you're on 12. If with four. the firebomb plus your seven, you would reduce me down to six health. Sure, 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 sure. So there's, I will, I will follow your, I will follow your advice. I, I think here, uh, and do yeah. this fireball. That's trashed. Then, yeah. So you uh, tr you put it in the sacrifice pile. It then gets to deal four damage to the target player and to each of their champions. And guards do not protect against that four damage to, uh, to the player. Okay. So you choosing to do so? I sure am. Okay. okay, so, so that is follower is knocked out, proof. and then four, t four damage to, to your opponent. And then you also have, uh, what was the total of seven? Yeah, it was three plus two and two, so mm -hmm. seven. seven. So two four and then another seven. Okay, so that's another seven. Mm -hmm. And that puts me onto six health. Okay. Meaning a very poorly priest uh, warrior. <laughs> and, and the other benefit you have right now, uh, the red player has, is that they, that you played the orc, which is a guard and protects sure. for three as well. So you're a little bit more protected in the next round, hoping that uh, you can then deal another six and, and knock out your opponent in time. That would be ideal. Yeah, well, we'll see. Okay, so I think that's uh, everything on your turn. Right. Yeah, it is. Okay, so discarding these cards we're going to be uh resetting all of the other ones you uh and then now i'm drawing correct uh yeah and you can draw five uh yeah. or i can draw four and then i need to shuffle oh it is four yep yeah, exactly and then so with the deck clicking once then releasing and then clicking and holding to then move it and then hitting f to flip while you're holding Flip. I think it you can you can yeah you can flip sorry you can flip things once they're placed as well uh, so if you don't remember to flip it once you've placed it you can still do that afterwards and then okay. right click oh, shuffle there we go shuffling and dealing one more one job one two need okay and yellow your turn so okay uh, time, I'm waiting come back for the <laughs> go ahead uh, you still in there we go there's your fifth I, I was gotcha. waiting for your draw fifth. Uh, okay, so uh, let's have a look. See. Just finishing up here. Okay, so I shall uh, play my resurrect ability. Okay. And that basically allows me to put a champion from my discard pile into play, but only a champion that was stunned since my last turn. So that would be your follower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my follower comes back into play. And then I shall pay, play my fire gem. 
and I shall activate Bless. So I gain three health. Okay. And then this, uh, then your guards, uh, your champions have their plus one as well for until yep. the next the end of your next turn. Um, I shall then play Smash and Grab, and another Fire Gem, and that would be Gold and Wolf Shape. So, uh, I will the smack, smash and grab. I'm going to take a, uh, a this. So, uh, let's take and do that. Okay. And so, I shall place. Okay. Oh, the key will win. Do that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, okay, so, so uh, the hit job is going to the top of my deck. I, I can sort out the rest of the cards if you want. Okay. While you're doing the rest of your turn. And then I shall uh, sacrifice the fire gems. Right, sorry, I bear miss one before I do that. I've got two, four, five. Uh, minus two for the bless. Okay. Yes. So it leaves me with three. Mm. And nothing <laughs> is worth three. Yeah. At this point, I don't want my fire, uh, any more fire gems. So I'm just going to sacrifice these. Okay. And you're not purchasing any more of them. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so they are. Lose the three coin that you didn't get to use. And yep. then sacrificing the two to get six damage from them. Yep. So that's six. That's 12 and uh, 14. And then I activate the follower for another one. So that's 6, 12, 14, 15 damage. And then one and important thing with this uh, Wolf Shaman is that uh, it's actually a champion and so it would be then turned and placed on the side. Oh, here. yes, it is. Yeah. It's okay. So it's a 15 damage. 15 damage, so 3 to your Orc Grunt. Okay. So that brings it down to 12. So it and then the five. final 12 is <laughs> going to be dealt uh, 4 to the Street Thug. Okay. So uh, so then that's uh, 8 left over? And 8 to you. Uh, mm. I could have ended the turn, but I, I want to see where this goes. <laughs> okay. Playing a little risky. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's part of the fun. So yeah, and so yeah, pointing out that the twelve would have then uh, sort of ended the game with the opponent having gone to zero. But yeah, wanting to see what the next turn has uh, to offer with uh, you being a four and nine. So so and I shall now uh, flip uh, these. So e e. And so then you, you get a sense of how those fire jams can actually be quite powerful when you get rid of them mm -hmm. uh, because of the amount of damage they generate as well as them clearing out of your deck for later on. So mm -hmm. early early turns, uh, it is worth getting them because they give you that buying power, which you're going to need, especially when you have a market that costs this much, uh, but also being able to then get rid of them easily by discarding them and the benefit of them causing damage. Sure. So. Okay. 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 Uh Okay, all right, so... Uh, um, as a reminder, my champions have plus one uh, on their defense. Mm -hmm. Ah. Because the Bless ability was triggered last turn. Uh, only one of them is a... Is shield, a guard. Though, which is the yeah. guard. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you would need to do two, and then everything else will go directly to the uh, opponent if needed. Um, so you would be discarding a card. Okay, so okay. yellow, you're discarding one card. I have my cultist out here. Okay. I have my fire staff. I have a gold. And then this gold here. Uh, so, uh, but unfortunately, not another action card, right? Correct. Yeah. 
So three, doing some math here, three, four, scrap for seven, so two, for the, uh, two for the cultists would be nine, which would have been, no, uh, I need two more. So again, reminder of the uh, channel ability that your wizard has. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would have done then. Um, I mean, this is all somewhat hypothetical. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, I would have channeled then minus one. Whoops, did I do that right? Uh, no, you went down two, so it would be you would be at three instead. So just add one more. To, oh, I can do that. Are you adding? Uh, sorry, that's right here. All right. Okay. Um. So then I draw a card. Uh, you will, and we'll have spent two of the coin uh, as well to trigger that ability. Oh, unfortunately, not another action. Yeah. Mm. So that's where the comboing could have happened, where if you had right. played another action, then you would draw another card, and it, you could kind of get the cycle going. So sure. that gives you two more coin um, and still nine damage total, uh, when including sacrificing this. Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo. Uh, so, um, yeah, I would just do two to, or, uh, well, yeah, two to the follower. And then okay. it's um, And then seven left over? Yeah, and then I would have seven, which, you know, uh, probably four to the wolf shaman and three to the hero. So let's do that. Okay. So also, also targeting the wolf shaman for four? Okay, um, so... How many left over? Uh, and three. Um, so you down to six. And the but the the wolf shaman uh, did that also have plus one to it? I, oh, it did, did have plus so, one, so it would yeah. have been uh, been two. Uh, yeah. So you're you're actually at seven. Yeah. Um, and then I good, that was good catch. Mm -hmm. I scrapped this in order to um, trigger that. that damage. So mm -hmm. you can pop that over there, and then everything else I think goes to discard. Yeah, none of those are champions, just your yeah. cultists, which you have over here. Okay, so I'll put those in your discard if you want to set your cultist and channel back up to a uh, ready position. I can do the channel, actually. If it lets me. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okie dokie. So yellow, your turn. Oh, and then you're drawing five cards. Uh, in case yeah. You get another turn. Whoops, not deal five. <laughs> no. Trust. Yes, uh, that, that is something w worth pointing out. Uh, be cautious between the difference between deal and draw. They might yeah. look like they're the same numbers, but deal is going to give everyone who's uh, playing a certain number of cards, and that's going to cause some problems when playing this because you each have independent decks and don't want to be right. dealing with the rest of the right. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I don't want to have your cards in my deck or in my hand because that would be an unfair advantage. Um, so I shall start off by playing a Kraka High Priest and then I shall... Um, so are you going to trigger the pill? Okay, go ahead. Yep. Uh, so that I will activate and gain two health and draw a card. So that's using the top half of that card's ability. And so here, here's an example uh, for the red player that th this card has two halves to it. And so right. the activated ability at the top can be triggered whenever you choose to. With champions, you can trigger it after it's been played. It doesn't have to be at the time of playing the card. And then the bottom half being triggered when a card of that color of the matching faction is played, an ally card. I shall then play Hit Job and Prayer Beats for. F oh! Um, so I shall use that to gain five health. And you would have gained actually two. Oh no, you already gained the two health there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that puts me to 14 now. Uh, so, uh, then I shall play these and purchase nothing. Um, 
Did I just drop that on my discard? No. Uh, did you have a coin? Is that? Yeah. Okay, possibly. Yeah. So, so uh, then that's so that's three. I'm not going to use those to purchase, but I am going to sacrifice the the coin. Uh, sorry, the fire gem. Uh, so that is three plus three seven. damage. Uh, that's ten damage, and that's, that's so three against the <laughs> death cultist, mm -hmm. and three against the wizard. Yep. Okay. Seven against you to put you onto minus four, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a necromancer, you'd be undead and you'd be in your element. Yeah, I'd be fine. I'd be fine. Okay. So, thank you very much. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Good game. Oh, yeah, thank you guys. And uh, thank you for everyone else uh, who was following along with the playthrough. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks. I'm going to end it, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>